Uh, we live. Uh, we live. Seems like it. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Seems I left myself a reminder that we're supposed to be working on junk data cards here. I don't have the computers or recycling facilities built for this just yet, though. Um, I probably added those to the request over here. Apparently not the recycling facilities. Might take a little while. Not sure exactly how many of these I'm going to need either. Um, looks like the recycling facilities are going to be relatively easy to get built though. Um, so yeah, I was trying to figure out how many of these we can fit together. Um, in a block. We do have one tile either side of the pipes if we do it like this. Uh, we need an input and a physical input and output. One in, two possibilities out. Um, if we do, like, I think it was 108 of these, we get 90. Well, it's actually. 127. What about... I think this adds up to 96. Let's see. There's like a 0.1% chance we get nothing out of it. Apparently. Um, but I'm just going to say that the amount of blank data cards going in is the amount of stuff coming out. So, 75 machines is the most that we can support with two belts. Um, so we'll either do 75 or 150. I doubt we're going to do 150, considering this is only 70. That's about perfect, actually. Um, let's see if we can uh, fit the recycling facilities to support it. I should be sleeping, but t hacks is online. Sorry, Rorosaur. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Shall we do a ASMR stream? Try and emphasize the deep voice mode. Um, okay, so if I, all of these just turn broken data cards into scrap, and we also get blank data cards. All right, if we have 70 of these, we get 24.36, uh, that's not as many as I was thinking, actually. Well, let's see. 70 of these gives us 24.3 broken per second. And... We actually need quite a lot of machines to cope with that. 24.36. Uh, we need... 47. Uh, that's, uh... That's kind of a lot. Can we even fit that here? Four rows of twelve. Let's see. At least we don't need any pipes for this part. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Twenty. Oh, that's going to be too close. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this is 40. 
and we theoretically needed like 47 to support 70 of these. 24.36, 24.44. Yeah, I think we're going to have to cut down a little bit more as well. Uh, especially since we're not really going to have room for the train outputs at this rate. I guess we'll have to get rid of one more row of these. At least now that's an even number. Um, so if we're doing 60, that'll give us... Wait, those do have speed threes, yep. Uh, and that's as many as we can fit. 20.88 broken data cards per second. And to consume that, we need, we still need, wait, what? 50? Oh, I misread it. 20.8. Let's just call it 20.8. Uh, that would be 40 recycling facilities. Which is exactly what I've got here, actually. Hey, Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are you able to show me how you set up your inserter production? There's so many materials just to make the blue ones. Uh, yeah, so... I, I Do you mean, like, at the start of the game? I've still got the old spaghetti base here. Uh, but this was very much, I didn't have that much space to work with because we were under pressure from biters and I was learning a new production chain. Um, so let's see, we've got cogs and iron sticks. Where's the inserters? Iron stick and single cylinder directly inserted into the next one. That requires small electric motor as well. I don't think you're going to get much out of this, um, looking at this spaghetti right here. Uh, fast inserter is the same as it used to be, I think. So, it's really just a matter of this EITA. Uh... I don't think sticks were part of long-handed inserters. You know what? I kind of... I kind of should set up an inserter production chain up here. Interesting that just the one assembler was sufficient for inserters. Um, I think just one of each... Uh, one of each machine for inserters will be enough. Well, maybe not for science. Um, obviously, if you're scaling up science, uh, where is it? Then inserter production is going to need to be sped up a bit. Um, but for, for general use, uh, your throughput of inserters is overall is really not that high. Same goes for belts, although you want to have a lot of storage for these things. I just built the silo and haven't set up my inserter production. Just going as I please. Uh, let's see, so... Can't build those here. Where are my... Space assemblers? Let's see what we can come up with. So first is burner inserter. I'm just going to put a constant combinator next to this saying what it goes into it. Uh, this and this. Didn't even mean to click that, but it doesn't matter. Yellow inserters. Um, also need small electric. 
long arm inserters are a dead end, so we'll aim those over here. Iron plate. And then we've got fast inserters, stack inserters, step filter inserters, and filter inserters. And the other prerequisites are green circuit, iron plate, green circuit, red circuit, cog, green circuit, um, and green circuit actually. So I'm thinking... See how similar I can make it to my old uh, builds. So we have something like... It's only these two that use sticks. So probably that comes in here somewhere. Something. Main plate goes only to these two. I don't think we're going to get as convenient a layout for these uh, as we've had with like Vanilla. Let's try this. That goes there. And sticks go... Sticks are probably a bit of an afterthought, honestly. Iron plate and stick. If I offset these a little bit... No, I don't think that's particularly matters. Let's say this, this is iron plate. Uh, I think we should put it closer to the fast inserters. Green circuit. We need way more green circuits than red circuits for this. 15, 15, and 1. Hmm. I think we'll have separate belts for the green circuits. Like... Like this. Is it really just these two that use iron plate? That's kind of a... Kind of a nuisance when it comes to belts. Okay. And I like to have a chest. Green circuits go here. Actually, if we want to build this for high throughput, because stack inserters can really gobble up the resources quickly, uh, it would pr probably make more sense to do it something like this. Never mind that they're yellow inserters, I'm just figuring out where things go. Ground belt for cogs. I'll put some filter inserters so we can see where things go. Green circuit. 
uh, green circuit here and red circuit. Um, I'm tempted to just put iron plate and stick on the same belt. Iron stick max rate would be 10 per second, iron plate 10 per second. And this is with the tier 3 machines. K2 is what gives those recipes. My favorite way to do an inserter construction array is to build it all around a landing pad as a giant holding chest for intermediaries. Yeah, I've done that when I was playing with uh, A2 with a friend. Um, you could fit like, I think, eight 3x3 uh, three three assembly machines around a... I forget what the big container was called. Um, and then you just have everything connected to and from the giant uh, container doing direct insert and pick up from the giant container uh, with limiters on them. It's uh, It makes for a pretty clean build. Okay. Um, so green circuit goes here and here. We need iron plate here. This is... Uh, small electric. And this is... single cylinder engine. I guess we're not going to have many belts going through the middle of this. So we could probably just put iron stick and uh, iron stick and iron plate on this. This one's already got everything it needs. Iron plate. Iron plate. And that's pretty much it, I guess. You can put the other stuff wherever you feel like. Yeah, that should do it. Wait, what about the sticks? Whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, this will be iron plate and iron stick, actually. Yeah, I think that is pretty close to what I would build if I was doing this again. Does that help? Uh, although I did accidentally use space belts. I can't, well, not accidentally, I can't really use anything else for it right now. Um, just throw that on the Discord. Alright, uh, let's grab some of these recycling facilities that we've built, if we can find them. Definitely already got requests for them somewhere, here we go. Uh, we need 40. I 
I remember the first time I designed something like that, um, or the process of designing it like that, instead of using the constant combinators or setting the filters on the inserters, uh, I literally dropped on the ground the things that were needed for each, um, uh, for each assembly machine, and that really helped, helped me figure out how these things could fit together. What about computers? Do we have computers? 60. We have no computers. Why do we have no computers? Because we're still trying to make many, many, many pipes and they're all going to the spiders. Okay, can we give the pipes a rest for a minute? Except then we're just trying to... Wait, what? Oh. No, we are catching up with the pipes. I don't want to have to turn off every other request to start making computers, but I will. Maybe I should have a longer row of these space manufactories. It would be very difficult to run into many problems if we had six of these in a row. Okay, uh, let's turn this off. That can stay on for now. Off, 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 and off. Now what are we trying to make? Still recycling facilities. Well, those don't take long. Um, yeah, at this rate, I think we need to make a little change here. Just computers. Switch this off. Connect this up. Okay. Do we actually have everything we need? Space assembly machines. Space assembly machine. Apparently it's not... Wait, what do we make a space assembly machine in? It doesn't say it's made in anything in particular. A modified assembly machine that can work in space. Okay. We're not setting any requests over here. What? Input? Huh? It's not receiving a signal for the space assembly machines. I'm sure we were making them before. Um, I just want to confirm that this isn't some weird exception to things that we can craft with Autocrafter or something. No, let's turn this off for now. And I'm going to set this recipe. Okay, so we can... We can make space assembly machines with these. Space assembly machine. Point it at this. It's working, I think. Okay, so why... So we don't need some special signal like recipe space assembly machine. Uh, so why is... This constant combinator, which is feeding signals of... Let me just confirm this. I'm going to turn this off. Wait, is it because we already have them? How many space assembly machines do we have? Uh, I'm going to request some. Okay. 
on the way 70, 80 something. I don't think we have... Oh, I was only... I, I, I am of suboptimal intelligence. Uh, this signal wasn't going through because we already had it. It was being subtracted from the logistic network. Okay. Let's just set that to 100. And that way we're not going to be any lower on the prerequisites that we need for these. After all that, the supercomputers are actually surprisingly easy to make. I think I'll just leave it like this for now. I've already got 10. Oh, no, I've already got 25. That's good. Alright, we'll leave that going until it finishes making the supercomputers, then I'll set it back to making everything. I think I really would like to um, make a more complicated version of this that, like, maybe it could use a pulse and a memory cell to change recipes once per minute or something, so that we get, like, a minute's worth of supercomputers whenever we dip below our target, and it doesn't change recipes too suddenly or often. That would also automatically behave, uh, it, it would add some latch behavior to it, which would be rather useful. So I think we're going to do just the standard layout for these. I don't know how much better you could get than this layout. It would be nice if all of the computers weren't placed where I'm not working with them. In fact, I should probably just build this first and then use a blueprint to copy it everywhere. Is that a ghost? It's a ghost, isn't it? I think some of the spiders have... Yep, computers in their logistic trash slots. Um, okay. Give those back, please. send them back to have the bots automatically fix up their inventory and we'll bring back some more computers. Two, four, six. Substations are going to cover everything. Very nice. Can't skip over one and have it reach everything, so we'll do it like this. Actually, I think we will not quite be able to have that reach all the way down and look consistent. How about this? Alright. Input belts. Down to here. Okay. Can't exactly make these all line up with the uh, recycling facilities to the south. 
I'm not sure how I want to go about this. Uh, maybe I could do them in sets of two. So this will produce six point, let's call it seven broken data cards per second. Which... We only need three of the... Oh, wait. I was looking at the wrong number. Um, 14. We need 14 of these to... Yeah, 6.7, 7.2. 14 of those to deal with this. But I know if we copy this across... Blueprint... Actually, use the navsat so we don't have to worry about deleting it later. Snap to grid relative, reduce the width by one. And... Uh, what is this? 12, 24, 48, 60? Sixty gives us twenty point eight eight. Forty consumes twenty point eight. Uh, as much as I can't fit. Four point one seven six, and this consumes more than that, but it's wider. Okay. For all of the way, they're sort of mismatched. Um. It seems they're going to fit together surprisingly well with this layout. If this goes down here... How many outputs do we have? One, two, three, four, five... Versus... Two, three... Four inputs? That's going to be a bit awkward. Uh... We don't have to have really good balances or anything, though, because uh, it's only, like, 20... Less than 21 items per second. On the other hand... No, I think we do need to balance and split all of these. Unless I can somehow line it up so that every 12 of these lines up with 8 of these. If we went, if we had room to go just a little bit more vertical, it could just be one row, one column like this instead of the double. Hmm. Can we move all of this up a little bit? We're only getting 50.4 blank data cards in per second. We've got... Um, how many? One, two... One, two, three, four, five, six inputs. So each belt splits into three. I think I've got bad news coming. This is already too far up. Unless we did the input like this. If we did do that. Two belts coming down. One. Two. And then uh, 
auto save. Yeah, this will be pretty straightforward actually. Oops. Two, three. Hold on, could that go down a bit? It could. Well, I don't think it matters. Um, okay, if we really need a couple more tiles. do the input like this. So let's suppose we do that. Move this up. Two, three, four, five, ten. Alright, so this is the middle. I could move it one tile further up still. If I use undergrounds here, I'll have to move a little bit. Let's just move this back. Nope, not quite. the middle again? Here. I could even move it all the way up there, although it would look a bit unsightly. But more importantly, does it give us room to get... Oh, this is actually only five. We need eight of these in a column, and we're barely getting to six. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to cut it. 4.17 per second, 4.16, okay. Wait, maybe I could just stretch these out a bit. That might actually make a lot more sense. How many undo levels do I have here? That's good. Um, so, we want... Well, the other problem is we've got five outputs going into four inputs. And I don't particularly want to have to merge and split them all. If these two go to here... No, that's not going to work. Also, I am upsetting my bots. Let's give them a bit more power. Maybe bring the spiders back. Oh, I should set some... Did I set requests for computers? Yeah, I did. Fantastic. We should have plenty of them being carried by the spiders by now. And I think we can go ahead and switch all of these back on now. Okay. I've really overused the, uh, batteries here. Let's give the bots a group hug. Fantastic. So this is one, one, two, three, four tiles too close together. 
if we want it to line up with this, but then stretching it out won't work because, like I said, this is five outputs to four inputs. Um, we've got 60 machines here and we can definitely go one deeper. So if these were rows of seven, 14 of these, well, what's 60 over 14? 4.2, it's still more than five columns. Uh, what about over 60? There we go. So if we can fit another set of two computers down here. I think that's cutting it rather close. But if we move the whole thing up, let's say to here, actually, yeah, we could put that splitter on the other side. more of these. That's not gonna... Oh yeah, no, that's correct, actually. So this is 16. Um, 16, 32, 64. Yeah, we should be able to fit. The only outputs are scrap and blank data cards, ultimately. Let's put our signals in place. That goes there, that goes there. Will there be able to be room? No, oh, let's find out. Let's say figure out how to do this. That output's looking a bit off. Remove all of these. Like this. Cut this. Make this one line up with the next slot. Lined up? I think it is. Yeah. It somehow looks a little bit tilted. Okay. That is a bit more. Oh, right, we have extra. This is actually 64 now. Could maybe fit a couple more of these on the side. I don't think I'm gonna like the way that looks or anything. I could also just remove like four of these. Well, that would actually be one per uh, column, wouldn't it? So that could definitely look pretty neat. Or neat enough. So that ratio should be very close. 20.88 versus 
Does this map have enemies? Uh, as far as I know, in orbit, you don't have to worry about biters. Uh, but we do have quite a few we still need to clear out on Narvis, actually. Speaking of which, let's uh, send the spiders out. To the safety dance. We do have artillery that's slowly chipping away at uh, all of the biters, but it is a lengthy and expensive process, so getting the spiders to clear all of these out with rockets is a bit more expedient, although it obviously takes a lot more, uh, a lot more player attention to get done this way as well. But also, the faster we clear out the biters, the faster the um, artillery will clear them out relative to how quickly they'll expand. So, let's do... whoops. I don't want to have to do that again, so I'll check on them in a few minutes. Just in case. Okay, so each one of these columns is actually a really, really good ratio. Um, we can put these a bit closer as well. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. So we're going to have... Um, Two belts coming in, and this needs to one one belt needs to cover half, and one belt needs to cover the other half. It's going to need an underground. That's actually frustratingly close to being a convenient fit. Probably move it down a tile or so now, though. If we want to do the... Wait, how fast are we going to get blank dark cards out of this? 50.4 per second total. Also, I forgot that it's not just broken data cards that are coming down here. Um... Hmm... I may have painted myself into a corner slightly. We might have to reduce this a little bit. Doesn't know much about Space Mod. How many... How many map? Oh, uh, Heineke. Also, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, there's... The answer to how many maps or how many surfaces there are in space exploration is many. Uh, these are all solar systems um, with varying amount, uh, varying numbers of planets. This only, this one only has one. But uh, the starting solar system, for example, I don't know how typical this is, like how much variation there is, but there's. Uh, what, a dozen, couple of dozen planets? Not to mention the asteroid belts, and you can actually build stuff around the sun, I believe.
Yeah, I think I'm going to trim this a little bit more. At this rate. If we only have 32 recyclers, we can do 16.64 broken data cards. Which would be, let's call it 48 supercomputers. That's 12 times 4. I think we'll just go with that. It's going to be neater anyway. Also, how have we... Oh, we've done the same thing with recyclers, haven't we? No? I thought I had a lot of recyclers. I'm not seeing them in the trash slots anywhere. What about my trash slots? No. I remember requesting 40 of them, and that wasn't a problem at all. Let's check the spider's requests. Zero recycling facilities, that's why. Okay. They probably took them all back. Okay, copy you all over the place. And send the spiders back for resupply. I quest each of them come with unique resources. Yeah, more or less. Uh, so Nalvis is 100% solar um, and like an even balance of each resource. The core fragments that you get from Nalvis are just regular core fragments. Um, I think that's the only planet that gives you regular core fragments. But other planets have different types of primary resource. Different amounts of solar power that you're going to get. Uh, this one has biter meteors, so you want to try and prevent those from landing even more so than usual. Day-night cycle changes. Uh, the amount of biters... There's quite a few planets that have zero biters to start with. Um, yeah, you can see some of those differences here as well. These are all of the planets that we've been to. Uh, mostly to get all of the different core fragments being sent back to Nalvis. So that uh, at least at a slow rate. We have an infinite supply of every resource. Um, okay, so we've got 48 of these now, right? Yep. Just want to double check. 16.7. 32 of these. 16.64, that's good enough. Okay, we could probably add a couple more recyclers, but I think it'll be fine. So I think what we'll do here is... One, two, three, four... I think we'll just share these output belts. Yeah, we'll just do this every time. So... Blank... Blank data cards will go here. Scrap will go down the middle. Pretty sure fast inserters are all we need for this. 
Uh, that also goes there. Depending on the shape of things, I might do it the other way around. Where the blank data cards go to the left. Since I kind of want the blank data cards on the left side. Just to double check. All of the blank data cards here, only 10 per second. And all of the scrap, 20 per second. So 10 per second from this side should be fine. All right. to figure out where the substations go as well. Oh. Well, that's literally perfect. online. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, and Gustafa Farquhar, thank you for the follow also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. Where's our spiders? Resupplying. Get back here. Uh, so, I think, I think that's it, that's going to be our build, basically. And then we just have to get, well, I suppose I could easily fit more of these. What's the minimum consumption? Uh... Three point... that's nothing. Three kilowatts. It's gonna be so overkill. I guess that's fine. I mean, what else are we gonna do with this space? Add another set of substations down here. And this goes here. So, don't forget the outputs. Oh. Oh no. Well, I guess we're adding more substations. Uh, now that's not going to look consistent. Yeah, 
It's probably fine. Hey, Ray God. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders. How was your stream today? It worked. Fantastic. General Tank. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that's not gonna... Okay. Can't win with these substations. I guess we'll just put some extra ones over here. I don't love that, but it'll do. Now then. Uh, we need to bring the outputs together. And then filter them. Speaking of recycling, ND. Uh, let's check the max rate for all of this. Blank data cards, 40 per second. Uh, scrap, 104 per second. Which isn't quite going to happen. But... Call it two belts of scrap, plus 40 per second blank data cards. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five outputs. But the blank data cards are sharing. Uh. Maybe I won't have the blank data cards share an output with these things, actually, with that kind of throughput. Especially since we've already got such a convenient output for them here. Uh, I just need to... Merge them over this way. I'll have to do, I suppose. Maybe this part's wrong. Oh. Slight mistake. I've done that like four or five times now. And it surprises me every time. Okay. So that's our blank data card output. It's definitely a much simpler way to go about it, actually. Since we've got the space. goes down here. Fast loader. By fast, I mean just fast inserters. And... We're looking at probably... Just under 90 per second scrap at max rate. So it's probably going to be a little bit like this. Uh, we do have one, two, th three. That's missing inserters. Wait. Yeah, no, that's goes there. I really don't like that particular inconsistency. Let's bring these up.
one more. Okay. So our outputs are here, 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 and here. Uh, we should definitely merge the two from the sides. to merge to both sides. So... I'm not going to do that. That goes there, that goes there. I guess it doesn't matter which one of these is blocked off. Something like that. That should be fine. stations. Actually, if this is going to be scrap, then that should be a priority pickup. And actually, it'd be a little bit faster if I do this first. The fast inserters can keep up with 90 per second coming in. Uh, even on the strict setting, if I recall correctly. Oops. That's just about it. Let's do our substations. And I always forget this doesn't quite work. Substation goes here and here. Blank data card. I suppose this one's a priority pickup as well, actually. Because this is all to deal with junk data cards. So, very high provide priority. We're not using fluids here. Uh, LLTM, what's in the station? Name is going to be blank data card. Provider, active provider. And this one for scrap. It is scrap, right? Yep. Tell LTN what's in the station. Don't forget the inserters. And then, is there anything missing? Apart from these bits of belt that need to be corrected. Do we need a lane balancer for this? What's our input here? 
57 junk data cards per second. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. Oh. Uh, that might be a problem. Do we have room to move this down a bit? We could definitely move the entire thing down at least three tiles. I think we'll do that. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, four tiles, actually. Why is that red? I somehow didn't cut that part? I would rather recreate that than have to do all of this again, so we need one tile of space here. Alright. Give us plenty of room for this part. In fact, we could probably squeeze in a lane balancer. I'm not sure how necessary it is. I haven't actually made a blueprint for the small lane balancers for this, but I'm very. That's probably because I'm able to build them from memory in a few seconds. We can't really fit one of those here, though. Maybe if I move it over one tile... Oh, that's... That's tragic. That's a tease. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, what about down here? We could do it this way. I don't think I can fit a long or a wide. Go straight through. That goes there. If we do a wide. I mean a long one. There. Yeah, we obviously can't fit a long one here somewhere. I could maybe just have a lane balancer for most of the block and not this belt in particular. Would probably be fine. Uh, a wide one, we just... Barely. Cannot fit here. Corner one just makes it awkward to bring the belts all the way over here. It's just going to look a little weird. I wonder if I could make a wide one that's, uh, that's a bit more stubby. Like, if we start with a corner over here... Here we go, maybe. Uh, we could definitely move all of this over a bit, I think. Only a spoonful? A spoonful. Uh, 
that's not better. Um, let's start by copying this. And I was trying to think how we could... If this starts by going there... That's still... worse, actually. This could be here, and then it would be one, two, three, four tiles. It's probably gonna just end up being bigger than the other corner one. Blame me? No. Never. Okay, yeah, I don't think we're gonna... I don't think we're gonna be able to improve on this anytime soon. I think this will have to do. It's fine. At least that's what I'll tell myself. Okay, but this has to go up a tile. And then... Go there. That's not looking quite right. How about we move this over one more? And this can just go here. That's not quite right either. There we go. That's frustratingly close to being symmetrical. Okay. Two, three, four, two, three, four, that doesn't go there. That's almost perfect. And then we need some splitters, like so. I think this will do. Alright, so we're not going to need a station here. Uh, this is going to be requesting junk data cards. Junk data cards. What do they stack to? Let's see. 50. Okay. So we're going to request two train loads. Of jump data cards. And we're not going to forget to tell LTN what's already at the station. That is not where that goes. It goes to the LTN. Uh, the logistic train stop input. Okay. There should be a train coming to bring us junk data cards very shortly. Like within the next 10 seconds or so. And we need fluid as well. Uh, I kind of forgot that we needed anything but the junk data cards, so it's just as well. We do have room for a station here. Let's put our fluid drop-off about here. And we're going to need to pick up fluid as well. 
that's going to be uh, the 25 degree coolant after it's used. What temperature do we need here? Negative 10. All right. Negative 10. Cold thermo fluid. Negative 10 cold thermo fluid. And just change that so that instead of using a stack threshold, we use a regular one. That way this will work with fluids. Substations go here. Let LTM know what's in the station. And that should be it, except for these pump ghosts. Surprised the spiders haven't built them yet. Actually, I don't think I have the spiders carrying pumps at all. Also, we've got some power connectors missing here. Oh. oh wait, I can see what the problem is. Uh, I kind of forgot to add a couple of the substations. Speaking of which, it seems that all of the outputs in the middle are missing uh, belts. I'm surprised we still don't have a train coming. What's happening? Uh, the Combinator is switched on. Not for this one, though. Station names are set up. 16k junk data cards. Request stack threshold 160. Long trains. And over here we've got... 8,000 junk data cards. Uh, provide step threshold should be 160. Long trains only. Oh, this needs to be switched on. Well, there's your problem. Let's double check the other one as well. This has junk data cards. This is switched on. But we've only got 5.1k junk data cards here. So we won't be getting a train coming to pick them up just yet. Uh, that reminds me, I need to... I need to redo the loader for this one. We'll get to that later. Alright, so there's our chunk data cards not being loaded. Wait, what? Oh, you're, you're here for scrap. Okay. Where's the... Here we go. Junk data cards. That's the wrong one. Fantastic. Fix that other issue in a minute. Apparently, oh, we got our coolant already. Fantastic. Uh, we do still need to actually connect it. Hopefully it's going to be as easy as this. I don't think so. Spiders, I can't really see what I'm doing. That's a convenient spot that to line up. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wait, no, this has to go here. So let's just do it like this, perhaps. Oh, also that it's a connection. Nine, 
9, 10, 11, 12. Sure. Let's not forget to connect this here. And here. I guess it's going to keep following this pattern. Almost. There we go. Good Saturday evening. Use Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's connect those. And those. And... Now then we just need to connect all of these somewhere, which we've made a bit uncomfortable. Down on this end, at least. I think we'll do it up here, actually. That one's a bit awkward. I might have to move these undergrounds. That one will be too short. Hmm. I don't want to do like a snaking pipe that goes over there. Let's do this. Wait a sec, that's missing. There's actually just enough space to do this. I can live with that. I think. Alright, cool. Get to connect these. And I guess if we're doing that, this will look a little bit more consistent. And then... If we can... Pipe straight all the way down here. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that'll do. Fantastic. Also, these need to be turned around. What do we got here? Junk data cards. Uh, 8k. No stop is accessible. Oh, it's just... um. It's just a bit of rail missing, and or signals. Let's get the bots to deal with that. And we should see a train on the move now. Let's see if it's got nothing but junk data cards in it. Looks good. And now all that's left is to fix that other station or two. Let's just check that this thing works as it's supposed to first, though. I see computers light, uh, lighting up. And plastic. 
making lab noises. Like data cards are flowing out. And broken data cards are getting turned into scrap. Now all we need to do is watch everything and check that there's nothing... Oh, like this one, for example. Missing an input or having a blocked output or something like that. Let's go fix that. That was quick. Fantastic. It actually only takes one cold thermofluid for each of these operations. So it's going to be a long time before that runs out. Literally a hundred thousand operations. And there's our blank data cards. Nice. I think I did this already, but yeah, we've got uh, an especially low priority for pickup for the blank data cards at the point of production. The recycled ones come first. And here's our scrap. Fantastic. Uh, let's just... Add an icon here so we know what this is about. And then... Where's that station? This one's already fine. Uh, I'm a little bit lost. This one's fine as well. I'm looking for the one that has multiple, here it is, multiple resources, and I didn't make the loader the way I should have the first time. There might have been another one like that up here, yes. But we haven't got a train waiting for it at the moment. Okay, let's make a couple of precise loaders, the purpose of which is... Um, I'll actually leave these inserters, that's already correct. Although it is going to make it a bit hard. Okay, I'm going to send this train back for now. I'll turn this off. That way we don't have it blocking our vision. We've already got all of these connected by red wire. They are set filters and set sig uh, stack signal... Set stack size signal S. We're going to connect just one of them per cargo wagon with green wire. We're going to get the signals from the logistic train stop output. But we're going to remove the uh, encoded positions of locomotives and those sorts of signals. We're only interested in what the train is asking for. We're going to check what's already in the train. And subtract that from what the train is asking for. Each times negative one output each. Bring those two signals together. It'll implicitly do addition and subtraction. And then we need two arithmetics and a decider. The arithmetic combinators are going to say each divided by number of chests. Output each and output S for stack size. That goes to our red wire that goes to all of the inserters. And then... Once each divided by 24 gives us zero, uh, because it doesn't give us a remainder or a decimal, I'm going to say each less than 24, output each. It doesn't matter if we use input count or one here. 
Uh, the point is that signal is only going to one inserter per cargo wagon. And because we're not sending a signal for S, uh, implicitly the stack size is going to be set to one when it's not receiving anything from this red wire. So we're going to divide the total of the items that we still need to put into the train by 24. That's how many we need to put in per stack inserter. Uh, we're going to set it to the stack size. Uh, set the stack size to the remainder of what needs to be put into the train. And once it's low enough, we're just going to have a single stack inserter with a stack size of one swinging per cargo wagon. It's very important with this kind of circuit that you don't run out of items for any of these um, inserters when the train is parked here. Because we can't check what's left to be put into each individual cargo wagon, we have to just keep it all in sync. So because the uh, because the stack inserter, the last one to keep swinging for each cargo wagon, has to have just a little bit extra, we're going to bump up the provide stack threshold a little bit. And we've also got a strict uh, balanced loader over here, so we've got the same number of items available in each of these. So that should just about do it. We're going to do the same thing up here somewhere. Not this one. This one. I don't want to copy paste and mess up some of the uh, some of the signals over here, so that's why I'm being careful with this right now. So this one should already be working. Um, I'll turn this back on and the train should be on its way. Assuming we do have 200 stacks of scrap, which it looks like we do. Yep. I might just wait and see this working before we go and fix up the other station. So you can see, uh, you can see the S for stack size, how many items need to be put in by each inserter dropping down. And once it gets low enough, that's going to disappear entirely. And it's just the last inserter swinging a few times. All right, let's go put that up here like we should have before. And don't forget to connect red and green wires. Connect this to here, and this to here. This one's already set correctly. And that should do it. Contaminated scrap should be being picked up from here. Did I disable this? I probably did. We definitely have room to drop off contaminated scrap. There should be... Stack size of 50, and we've got 17,000 contaminated scrap here. There should be a train on the way quite soon. Also, I should be telling LTN that this 25-degree uh, thermofluid is available for pickup. Once I connect this, though, we need to make sure 
Actually, it'll probably be fine. You can't actually set a filter for thermo fluid on a inserter. And even if you could, I don't think it would make a difference to this circuit. But let's just double check down here as well. That is already correct. We did it with a red wire so that it wouldn't interfere with this circuit, but I don't think that was actually necessary. Now that I look at it. So we can stick to our usual color, uh, color scheme here. Fantastic. Alright, what about this station? Still not seeing a pickup. Uh, provide stack threshold 200. Priority is high. Oh, this is why. Checklist go bro. Make sure you actually connect it up so that LTN knows what's here. So give it 5 or 10 or 20 seconds. This light will go yellow. Scrap train will... A uh, contaminated scrap train will come to pick this up. Actually, it could be scrap, but I imagine it'll go for the contaminated scrap first. It's picking up the fluid first. Okay, then. Go on, get out of here. Does it schedule another train before that one gets back to the depot? Or wherever it's going? I would imagine it does. It's hard to tell though, with LTN so busy Actually, this network isn't that big yet, and I think we noticed the scheduling got faster when we started doing it up here, because it's a smaller network. Anyway, here comes our contaminated scrap train, so we can see this tested. And... Switching over to stack size 1 in... Three, two, one, go. Perfect. All right, then. You're taking the long way around. All right, what's next? I think we've got... Uh, we might have absolutely everything in place to keep force field data going. Now that we can deal with junk data cards, uh, contaminated scrap, scrap. Yeah, I think that's it. Alright, so we have all of the energy data cards that we're able to make are now in the rail network, which means uh, if we want to do broad energy insight, which I think we have to... No, wait, this just makes energy insight blank data card. Uh, so energy insight, rather. Broad energy catalog. We need energy catalog, broad energy catalog, and energy insight. Oh, we also need significant data. Um, hmm. I do want to do some of these more complicated simulations to make significant data. But obviously for now, all we've got in the rail network is um, 
is... Oh, we don't even have energy insights. I think what we'll do for now is basically this. Oh, but energy. We'll basically do this in a rail block. But a little bit more complicated, so we can do uh, energy science pack 2. Requires energy science pack 1 plus everything if it goes into... Okay. I might just try making a block where we work back from our conclusion of Energy Science Pack 2 and see how much of it we can fit. Let's see how that goes. Also, I was going to go back for resupply, but the spiders are almost here anyway. Oh, I should have checked on the spiders as well. That was probably a while ago. They're fine. No worries. What's happening here? Oh no. Wait, what? 2k, 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 2k. But you're looking for polarization data. Uh, it seems we weren't... It seems it provides stack threshold of 200 wasn't safe enough. Oh, I think I understand now, actually. Something that was causing problems with these a while ago. Um, I should probably just limit these... Because if we if this gets really full and then we take from it with the balance loader a number of times, then I mean I still wouldn't expect it to get imbalanced enough so that we end up with an inserter sticking out. Okay. Um I think we do need to actually limit the chests to make sure these things work consistently. So, limit chest to seven stacks. Seven times twenty-four, hundred and sixty-eight stacks. So that has to be full before we summon a train. I don't suppose I can... This is not going to work very well. Let's put those data cards... in my trash slots. I need to turn off these inserters. Trash slots are full. Take this away. The main thing I need to do here is 
is get rid of this signal. Actually, I don't know if that signal will go away. Uh, the logistic train stop output spits out a signal that includes what the train is asking for, but also that 160... 160, really? That would imply that 16 of the inserters were sticking out when the train got back. I wonder how this happened. Uh, anyway, I don't think that signal will go away. I think it's just... how many of these were in the train when it arrived. And unfortunately, if there's an inserter sticking out, it counts it as... It's like it gets put into the train, the frame, before it arrives at the station. I guess I could have sent this back to the mall and the LTN system, uh, the logistic network to LTN system would have handled putting that in. Oh, hindsight. Uh, let's pick these up and just... Oh, so now, now there's no signal. That, oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, no, it does have the 160 over there. Okay. I want to do a quick experiment here. Disconnect these two. Wait, what? That wasn't connected? Oh. Well, that might have messed something up. Yeah, that might be the problem. Okay, maybe... Maybe I didn't have to do that chest limiting thing. Alright, let's put this over here, and this over here, and unfortunately because of that other signal arbitrarily coming first, it's trying to... it's trying to load that uh, electromagnetic field data. Let's remove it from the equation, shall we? Now it's all out of sync. I don't know if this is going to work properly. The... Well, maybe. The one that does the last little bit Nope. Definitely not. Let's turn this off for a sec. Okay. So, having fixed this wiring, which was somehow not connected previously, Actually, I could have sworn it must have been connected before, because how else would we have gotten any electromagnetic field data? Unless it all came from a different train stop? We do have some electric mag electromagnetic field data over here. That should be using the same circuit. Alright, this goes back in here, and I think that's the end of those extra data cards sticking out. Alright, so that should be fixed now. I hope it was just that I missed a wire. 
If we see a train summoned over here, we've got 40k and 8k of these two, respectively. Wait, 40k? Really? Yeah, no, that looks about right, actually. Okay. Uh, if there's any demand for it, we should see electromagnetic field data uh, requested to be picked up here quite soon. Uh, I was going to say apparently the spiders don't have any scaffolding, but actually... There's your problem. Now their bots are being a bit weird. There we go. So, are we going to get a train here soon? It is connected. does know what we've got. There is a demand for electromagnetic field data. There's no other trains going to this stop right now. We do have... that's actually less than a train load. 6.1k electromagnetic field data over here. So this should be being picked up pretty soon. I'm not exactly sure what's taking it so long. Spiders seem to have run out of scaffolding for now. Let's send them back for resupply. And continue scratching our heads as to why there's no train headed over here right now. Miltian train stop input. 8.8 thousand electromagnetic field data. Constant combinator is switched on. Provide stack threshold 200. Oh, 200, that's why. Uh, so, we're actually looking for 10,000 before it'll summon a train. And we've got rather a slow trickle. There's no blank data cards here. But I was sure we had quite a few. 7.5k is not quite enough for a train to pick it up. Uh, 5.5k is not enough. And I saw this had stopped earlier for some reason. It seems we're missing rough data storage substrates. Which is a bit concerning, considering that comes from downstairs. Rough data storage substrates themselves over here seem to have dried up. Uh, I don't expect to see a whole lot of them over here. It's actually most of a cargo rocket. 40k, we need, we need 50k for that to launch automatically. But what's the problem here? We've got iron, glass, iron, glass. Iron, glass, and iron, and glass. This thing has stopped somehow. It's scrap output. Okay. I thought... I'm sure, actually, we have a... Uh, something to deal with... Scrap down here. Make sure that's super high priority and all that. What's going on with our scrap processing? It's looking very 
full, not heavy oil, not stone. Iron and copper. Uh, okay, wow. I actually need to make it so that this stuff can go straight to here to be destroyed. We're completely full on iron and copper everywhere. Here's 575,000 iron. Oh, copper, not so much. Wait. Wait, what? Uh, we're gonna have to deal with iron anyway, but... Copper... Copper here is completely full. Oh. Oh. That would... That would probably help. Yeah, that would explain it. Um, I think if we don't have a encoded network ID, uh, that that will mean it is allowed to take the iron and copper to here to be destroyed. Uh, but copper won't go there first because we've got room in storage for it. Uh, if I can find it. Yeah, there's, n there's actually no copper storage here. Even though we've got nearly 600k iron completely fulled up. Fulled up. Completely full. Alright, there should be a train coming to pick this up. Here we go. Fantastic. And we didn't forget a wire over here. Good. So it's probably just that there's quite a lot of storage here is the only reason it took so long to notice that we had this problem. As soon as this train leaves, I want to update this to have our usual color coding. Purple, same as active provider means we want to get rid of it as soon as possible. Uh, same for this one. Stone and heavy oil. Whoops. Heavy oil. Should probably set the provide stack threshold higher though. Since we have a precise loader there. Now then, scrap should be in motion relatively soon. Uh, once we stop picking up copper, actually. This one's still picking up copper. It's actually the iron that we need to move in order to get our rough data storage substrates going again. But if we're actually lacking copper, then obviously it's going to treat that as a higher priority. Which apparently we are, because we don't have any in storage. I thought we, uh, I thought we tapped some copper mines. Apart from the iron... Oh, wow. That is... It seems our... Our having plenty of copper days are coming to an end until we make some more mines. Well, there's another 18 million over there, and there's literally no biters on this side of the planet. Need more mining productivity? That would help to... Uh, one thing that's really nice about mining productivity research in space exploration is it increases your throughput from core mining as well. Uh, but yeah, that would be why we're not getting any more blank data cards for the moment.
Can we please pick up some iron? Nope. I just... Right now I just want those... That scrap to be removed so we can... Uh, get some rough data storage substrates. Also, once we destroy some of this iron, uh, it will allow the recyclers to do their thing and we'll get more copper as well. Just like with uh, core mining, we have to get rid of one so we can have the other. And here comes even more copper. I think it's going to pick up nothing but copper until it drops un until it drops below the uh, the provide threshold. How is the ore destroyed? We point cannons at it. Delivery cannons. And I actually set up something using the bot network here eventually, so that. Uh, using crafting combinators, we set recipes so that it'll use whatever resource we've got the most of here. Uh, so we're using... Since iron is the thing we've got the least trouble with uh, at the moment, we're filling this with iron so we can fire it at these chests full of whatever. Uh, see you. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And they'll fire as soon as the bots have stopped moving. Which we detect uh, by comparing available and total bots. That should be right about now-ish. No recipe. I guess we don't have enough. That's a nice feature that I accidentally put into this system. If these chests aren't full yet, we're not going to fire these cannons because there's not enough of whatever resource in the logistic network for it to say use that resource. Okay. So it's going to be a little while before we see the blank data cards flowing again. Uh, but now we know they're working. Well, they will be. Let's get some more scaffolding. And what was I going to do here? Oh, that's right. I said I wanted to work backward from the conclusion of... Um... Uh, Energy Science Pack 2, but I kind of need the entire block finished before I can really do that. And apparently I'm only carrying one of these right now. Energy Science Pack 2. So this needs Energy Catalog, this needs Broad Energy Catalog. They both need Energy Insight, they both need significant data. Holmium plate, Holmium cable, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Although it's actually like 3 seconds because the crafting speed is 10. And that's without any speed modules. Um, two energy science packs. And this requires two energy science packs, but it spits out four energy science pack twos. Which is not what I was expecting. They both spit out six junk data cards per recipe. So I think we're definitely going to put these next to each other. Hold thermofluid, negative 100 degrees. Um, yeah, it's really just going to be a matter of, well, we need to make the broad energy catalogs. Where are my computers? 
broad energy catalog is just the same as energy catalog except different cards. So I think we need probably the exact same layout. Energy catalog. But it's probably going to look a lot like this, but twice in parallel with slightly different recipes. Except I think I would like to use the tier 2 energy insight. All that does is gives us more energy insight and fewer blank data cards spat out. But... Okay, so we're going to have like... Uh, a row like this, and then another row like this, but for the other catalog. And then they're going to come together to make the insights. And then we're still going to be using uh, just energy simulation. And that's going to feed to two space manufactories that are next to each other. That are going to have a lot of the same, in same or similar inputs and outputs. Um... The tier 1 energy science packs are going to go straight to the other space manufactory. And then we're going to finally spit out the tier 2s. Um, I think I'll also make the tier 1s available to the rail network. We're going to end up with a lot of... Um... I mean, we've already got, what is this, 11, we're, we've already got 11 different types of science that go into uh, a lab. So I think it's a given that we're going to use bots to input into the labs. I do kind of need to put science, uh, regular sciences into the rail network as well. Um, I mean, that'll just be a couple of rail blocks like these. I kind of want to move the gargantuan amount of science that we do have over here into the rail network also and decommission these old ones. Hello, do you have a mod list? Indeed. Overclock. Good to uh, see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Whoops. Mods. There we go. Is there an easy mode for space exploration? I want to play it, but I'm a bit afraid of the complexity. Uh, I don't really think so. I mean, you could definitely give yourself more resources and play it without biters. Uh... That would give you fewer things to worry about. Machine learning data is actually pretty straightforward. Blank data card circuit, and that's it. And it consistently spits out machine learning data and scrap. There's no randomness to it. It's surprisingly cheap. All right, let's get our spiders back down here. It's actually getting to the point where they have a significant trek. I don't think we're going to have any issues with space or what we're aiming to do in this block. I think an ant got itself into my drink. How rude. Okay. Uh, this goes here. This goes here. And that goes here. 
What's that? This goes here. Alright then. Do we not have more scaffolding? Wait, surely we haven't, like, run out. No, we've got thousands. I don't think we're getting the spiders to carry enough scaffolding. I hope we're not going to get close to running out of inventory space. No, not even. Okay. In that case... Let's get you to ask for... Say, 300? What have we got? Like, 25 spiders here? Two thousand plus. Uh, it's still going to take a few trips to fill one of these, I think. Okay. So I'm thinking... Tier 1, Energy Science. Tier 2, Energy Science. Uh... Symmetrical fluid input output. I do want to be able to direct insert um, for the tier one science into the tier two. And we're going to need. I guess I could put it slightly further apart. How fast do, do these consume? 0.667 significant data per second and 0.667 energy insight. That is not a whole lot, actually. A holmium plate and cable is significantly faster. Those are not going to share a belt. But I'm thinking maybe something like this. And we could just have a long arm insert those. That'll easily keep up. We could have a belt with the common inputs. So, uh, significant data and energy insight. Next is energy catalog and broad energy catalog. We're definitely going to copy this. Don't think I've got enough space right here, though. So just for planning purposes. Just gonna do this like so. Um energy insight. What was the recipe for energy inside again? Also, where did my computers go? I thought I had more of them. Energy inside tier two. It just it's just the same, but it adds broad energy catalog to it. And we get more energy insights out of it. It's twice as slow, well, the recipe is twice as long, but we get three times as many insights. Um, let's 
So I guess actually it'd be a little bit more like this, and then give me that. Catalog tier two. I wonder how many of these it would take to support these two, actually. Uh, 0.54 energy insights per second, and we need 0.667. That can't be right. Can it? Energy insight. This is actually net positive already. Oh, I'm guessing the energy insights up here. Yeah, yeah, they get consumed for the significant data. And if we're only using energy insights, there's only one recipe. Probably going to need four of these. Three or four. Let's bring our spiders back. Hey, Noxyway Gaming. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Our target is 0.667. Okay, two thirds of one per second. Um... We actually do, in fact, need three of these. So I wonder if we could line them up so that we could do a direct insert. Also, this would be convenient, I suppose. It is better you set up a significant data card production. You mean, like, its own block? I want to do that, but for the moment, I've only got energy insights um, that I can use that for. I really want to get some amount of energy science pack 2s so that I can unlock a few research things that are going to be... They're going to have a significant impact on how we design other things, like uh, the pylon substations, for example. What else? Let's see. We've got... Um, bot speed. That's a little bit expensive. Nice quality of life, though. That's tier 3. Um... That is not what we're looking for. I remember there being at least three things that we can get once we get Energy Science Pack 2 that I'm really waiting for. Pylon. Why is this one red? Oh, because we need the Holmium Solenoid. Yeah, so Pylon Substation. Uh, I think beacon. Yeah. Uh, wide area beacon. Bot speed. And possibly something else. Ooh. Uh, portable RTG2. And what's this? Ion engine. Oh, we need Astro 3 for that. Uh, but yeah, suffice to say, there's a handful of things that I specifically need Energy Science Pack 2 for. Um, that's going to change the game in terms of designing things. Uh, what was the other one? Worker robot speed, 
big pylon, a uh, big substation. And beacon. Yeah. Beacons especially. I don't want to design, you know, old sciences without beacons, for example. Island substation is OP, indeed. So that's why we're sort of uh, digging straight towards Energy Science Pack 2 without, for now, consideration with how we put all of these things into the network. Energy 2 really unlocks a lot of quality of life, yes. Okay, um... So I wonder if we can... Do it like this. I don't suppose a belt will fit through there. Nope. Maybe through here. Not quite. I could do something a little weirder with the... It was only these two that were the common inputs. always just have the insights come down here. These ones need insights anyway. Okay, so this is slightly net positive for significant data. And insights, we need 7.14 per second. 7.147, which will take 14 of these machines. Uh, let's move this down here somewhere. Just want to make sure it's not going to do something weird with those extra entities there. Uh, did I say I needed eight of those? No. Fourteen, wasn't it? Yeah. 7.5. 7.14. Okay. So we're going to need 14 of these in a row. Twelve. That's twelve, right? Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen per second is a lot. Uh, it's fourteen of these machines, not fourteen per second. It's like seven point seven point one four seven energy insight per second. Um, and then outputs. This also spits out blank data cards. How do I want to handle them this time? Auto save. I'm 
We also need the... Okay, so the energy simulations are just going to be directly inserted there. We're going to filter out the blank data cards. And have them go off to the left somewhere. I suppose it would probably be fine to use this. What's the total output from all of these for both resources? Less than it's just over 10 per second. So we can definitely just put that on a belt. And... Bring that down here. Might need a little underground bunk. I think there is a problem. What's the problem? I remember rate calculator need to power up the machine. Uh, that's only for beacons. Yeah, it doesn't recognize if... Um, uh, if beacons are unpowered. Or it, it does, it just doesn't know how to calculate it. Else the calculation is wrong. Yeah, no, it does figure it out with speed modules. So this is 1.92 blank data cards per second. And this is 1.066. Okay. So that is energy insight and significant data. Then we just need broad energy catalog, holmium cable, holmium plate, energy catalog. Um, and both of these need both energy catalog and broad. So... How much energy catalog are we talking here? Energy catalog, 1.593 per second. How much does it take to support that? Uh, only nine? Is it nine up here, or have we gotten more efficient? Uh, this is 15. So yeah, that's already significantly more efficient. Uh, we will need the long arms. It does take two belts of physical inputs to support these things. So, I hate that it needs this odd number, but what can you do? And same thing on this side, but with a different recipe. Actually, I wonder if this is seven long. Maybe it would be better to just have... No, we've got the width instead of doing it long. Okay, this one needs to be broad energy catalog. Fluids are the same. Actually, I want to check something. 
That's negative 273. This is negative 100. Output is always 25 degrees. Wait, this is, uh, yeah. Negative 100. Negative 25. I mean 25. Negative 125. Negative 125. Okay. So most of them are uh, negative 100 to 25, but we will need the negative 273 as well. Did I copy all of these recipes? Alright, so that should give us a ratio that makes sense. Energy catalog looks good. Uh, broad energy catalog does not look remotely good because it's twice as slow. So we need uh, 18 of these. 16, 17, 18. And that should give us a very slight net positive for the catalogs. The exact same slight positive. Okay, so far so good. Um, we need Holmium cable and plate brought in from the rail network. We need eight different types of data brought in from the network. So that's eight, nine, ten, two fluids. Uh, yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 physical items brought in by the rail network, 2 fluids, and then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 physical outputs. That could be a little bit of a nuisance. Thank you for the follow, Turbulent. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, Alright, let's see how we go. I think step one... You know, if I really wanted to... Nope. Um, actually, no, that wouldn't quite work. We have sort of done that before, where we had actually eight different resources dropped off at a single station, but it's not that pretty. Thanks, bot. Oh dear. What a shame. What a shame. That's the most effort I've ever seen put into a bot name, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I think what we'll do is... Uh, I haven't actually got a blueprint for this yet. But I'll grab the template that we use for two inputs two physical inputs per station. Um, except we'll do it on both sides. And the first one is going to be conductivity, electromagnetic field, polarization, and radiation data. Conductivity. Activity data. What was the next one? Electromagnetic field data. And electromagnetic field data. All 
Alright, so then we're going to copy this across here. And then... Uh, polarization data and radiation data. Polarization. Radiation. Polarization. Radiation. Copy paste. So we're going to have four physical drop offs here, uh, four physical drop offs here, quantum and atomic. I feel like atomic and subatomic should go together. Let's do quantum and force field here. Quantum and force field. Why you need tier one data card? Uh, be because we need to make um, energy catalogs. Only doing tier 2 catalog in the insight only, right? Uh, the broad energy... Sorry, the uh, broad energy insight requires regular energy catalogs, uh, which require these tier 1 cards. Also, the tier 2 science pack requires the tier 1 science pack, which we're going to direct insert. Uh, so let me just double check I did this. Okay. And same thing over here, but we're going to change the cards to atomic and subatomic. Atomic and subatomic. Alright, that's enough eye strain for now. So let's say. Oh, and I think the rate is going to be easy to keep up with. Very easy to keep up with. We can do it with just one belt for each of these resources. Okay, so that is all eight of our card inputs. We need holmium plate, holmium cable, and two fluids. Um, so I think what we're going to do... ...is see how far down we can put this. That should be fine. Whoops. And this goes here, I think. Is that right? Blueprint, remove the signal so we can flip it. And yes, that's correct. Okay. So I'm thinking... That's not far enough, is it? If we're going to do like a fluid and a physical item on each side. We could do them on the sides. That might be better. I think there's plenty of room to do it that way. But also... It should be quite easy, since we need far less than one belt to do these like so. We 
can just bring that down wherever we want. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is gonna go down far enough for what I want. Oops. You have your tier 1 energy data card in rail network, but no tier 1 energy catalog? Not yet. Um, tier 1 energy catalog. Is there going to be some more efficient way to make this later on, or should we just put that in the rail network directly? We could... That might actually be... a much better idea. And then we only need one type of fluid. Just put in rail network, yeah. No, I think I think we will do that. Let's check FNEI. Catalog. It doesn't look like... There's ever going to be, like, a more efficient way to make energy catalog. Yeah, I, th I think... I think you're right. Catalog. Broad energy catalog. Same deal. Alright, cool. Let's do that. Um, I don't really want to lose this... How fast can we even make these cards so far? Oh, that's... That's not quite right. I mean, we can always scale it up, but just to get some idea... We're looking at like 3 per second of each type. And what would it take to consume three per second? Uh, like double this, which is... Suffice to say... Not a whole lot of space. They use the same coolant, right? Negative 270... Uh, negative 100. Negative 100. Yeah, I think we'll do a pair of these. Um, right now I just want to paste this here somewhere so we don't lose that ratio and stuff. And we'll do a nice easy block of... How much does this consume? 1.62 per second, so I think we're going to double this. It's too long to double lengthways. So, do it like this, except I want to change the inserters on that side. Deconstruction planner, inserter. You can't use an upgrade planner to swap um, long arms with these, so... Just get rid of that. I just don't like having the inserters reaching through each other. the vanilla first? Oh, someone's asking. Kazuaru? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Where can I find layout lists to fast-paced in-game for building? Uh, you mean like blueprints in general? Um, I don't know what the most popular or renowned 
uh, blueprint site is, but uh, uh, there's quite a few that I've uploaded to Factorio Prints. Also, you can find some on the Discord. target here. 3.24 per second. Would be exactly double this. Uh, so... 18. Sixteen, eighteen, be fine. Output. We need some substations. A bit snugly in the middle here, if we can. That's not going to reach up here, is it? This is too far. Alright. If there's one complaint I have with space exploration, uh, it's definitely that it takes far too long to get longer underground belts in space. all of those and then I guess we don't want to that to just one whichever's going to be more convenient here Probably doing this will make it easier to fit the other one. We don't want to use a lane balancer because we need to keep things on the same side of the belt. Uh, right side. Goes here. No, it, it is what we normally do, but that would support two belts of output, which we just really don't need this time. Um, so that goes there. And so on. We need way less than one belt of throughput. Okay, that should be fine. Although I feel like moving these over a couple of times. Just for the look of it. And then I kind of... 
kind of forgot to put the fluid. Um, I don't really want to do it on the side. We could. But what are we going to have? Two physical outputs. One fluid in, one fluid out. I think what we'll do is put the fluid stuff on the opposite side of these. And I think we can have a station that is both a pickup and a drop off. Uh, pumps go here. Substation. goes here. Once I understood the layout, I worked out a few tweaks to work better for me. And you can upgrade the copper and iron lines. Are we sharing blueprints? Fair enough. Alright, so tentatively, if we put a... Uh, loader here, here, that goes down, and this should actually be, oh wait, Depending on which I want to be which, one of these has to be flipped around. So let's see if we can do this. I want a pickup station, which is also a drop off station. Oh, that's actually going to be extra easy because we're having a solid and a fluid for pick up and drop off respectively. So we don't need to add any circuitry to this to make it work. All we have to do is say provide stack threshold 160 and not have a regular provide threshold because this is fluid which will ignore stack threshold. And we can have a request threshold of 100k requesting... I'll just triple check. It's the negative two... Uh, negative 100, rather. Uh, called thermo fluid. I think it's just as well I did double check, because I think I was about to say negative 273. So negative 100 degree... Thermo fluid. Uh, request threshold 100k, requesting a bit over that. And. The request threshold should be high enough that we don't accidentally. Uh, because we have no provide threshold. Um, and our default re provide threshold is a million, which is effectively doesn't exist. Uh, we're basically not going to tell LTN that we've got some cold thermo fluid here available for pickup when this number becomes positive when we get a train delivered here. Train load of fluid. Uh, so let's connect these as well. Uh, we'll make this one an G catalog. And energy catalog. This one's going to be broad. Energy catalog. And this one's just going to be uh, pick up stations all the way down. Because it's going to be picking up. Uh, 
25 degree thermofluid. Should be fine. So that is broad energy catalog and twenty five degree thermo fluid. And this one is uh energy catalog provider. And pulp demo fluid requester. So that should be that. And then we just connect all of these things. Um, this doesn't have any weird outputs except for the fluid. Uh, that's the only unwanted output. We don't have to worry about filtering off of belts or anything. Have a the whole thing consumes how much? Negative a hundred degree, only fifty seven per second. So we really don't have to worry about the shape of the pipes or anything. There isn't some magic. It's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I do like two fives and a three, I suppose. I guess we could put this up here. Nah, I like that even less. I think I'll have them f end at the same height instead of start at the same height. Gonna have something similar here to deal with the inputs. Although we have to split it into three for each, but that's not gonna be a problem or anything. Does that go where I think it does? Yeah, that's fine. Maybe it would be neater if I lined it up so that this was straight down. And then this would have to sneak through here. Whatever. Um... Even so, let's get rid of this for now. Make that end at the same height. Now I can't see where this goes. That's perfect. And this one. down here. That doesn't line up the same. Oh, 
about this. Actually, no, I don't want... I don't want to be in the way of the pipes. So these need to crisscross each other. Uh, I think it would look a little better if this went here, goes there, and then like so. That's fine. Alright, let me just double check. So one of these goes this way, one of these goes this way. Yeah, that should be good. And the final product comes down here. As for this one, it needs to be moved over by one whole tile. Output should probably look the same. I guess that could be a little closer if necessary. And then... I don't want to do the negative 25 degree thermo... I mean the 25 degree thermo fluid. Like this, maybe? It probably makes more sense for those pipes to be over here, actually. A lot more sense. And the microsecond I clicked. Autosave. There we go. That's too far. Much better. Except we can't do the... The center thing. With the 25 degree. If we do that up here. Also, if we do it up this way, um, because this is an output belt, there's nothing in the way over here. So that might make more sense. No, um, there's no like best distance to this, is there? That makes sense. No, there's no like three odd numbers that's gonna connect this up. Should probably put this a little further apart just so that we can do the undergrounds. Okay. And 
then move to here. Like where this is going. 9, 10, 11. That, I don't like where that is going. Well, it'll have to do. That's a good fit. Wait a sec. 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. And then we just need that connected as well. So it was 275 degree, I mean negative 100. Uh, is here, actually. See what fits best. Not 15, I imagine. That works. And now we just need the 25 degree to be able to escape. It is all connected already, so... All we have to do is something like this. I don't suppose there's one closer to the middle, not even. A little bit. Where's our output belts here? Need a splitter to merge these. Uh, that's going to the wrong place. Bring this down a tiny little. And then, once more. Space underground distance is short. Yeah, it really is. Alright. Let's get rid of that. Add a 7 or something. Space underground distance is only 5 compared to normal is 9. Well, it's 6 if you count. Um, if this is 5, then normal is 8. But yes, it is um, not a lot. It does not spark joy. Okay, so that one, that one, that one, that one. Got rid of all of those already. Oh, these are already... We don't need this pipe here. So I think that's just about it. Let's set up our stations. And see if we made any mistakes. Uh, we will be needing some more wire. And... Substations down here. This doesn't actually reach that substation. Weirdly enough. Oh, this is exactly lined up, that's why. Okay. What if we bring these down one more tile? That should look pretty neat. 
And then that goes there, that goes there. And we just have to tell it what we're requesting. Um, we've already set up this one. I think we can turn that on now. And this one is nothing but pickup. That's already set correctly. Cool. What else? This lone inserter lacks power. I guess we can move that over one tile. It still looks pretty consistent. Hey, Morpheus Cell. Good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. They're only one entity, so I believe they're a bit more efficient over long distances. Plus, they don't connect up if they're right next to each other. Oh, the lengths of pipe? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's basically a, a single piece of pipe that's been stretched really far. The, um, the maximum that can fit in any one of these is 100 fluid. Just like a regular piece of pipe. Uh, I understand that reduces the impact on UPS. And it also makes it a lot easier for the fluids to travel. Alright, there's our coolant. And it looks like it's got everywhere it needs to. Oh, I didn't set up these belts yet. That might help. Uh, this one needs to go here. And this one... Needs to go... Actually... Let's see. One, two, three. For each of these. Oh, we, we need two into three. But we don't need a balancer because the throughput is so trivial. We just need to point these things where they need to go. I might benefit from... Bringing all of this up a bit. Um, so that's going to go there. That's going to go there. This goes here. That looks a bit weird. I think we'll just connect that up like so. Also, where is this belt going? Oh, I forgot the entire thing is um, significantly less than one belt per second. Yeah, we were only not blocking this one because we just happened to have two outputs that we were going to. And I almost forgot to unblock this one as well. Okay. So... Makes more sense if we do it like this. And whoops, same goes for this one. Mm. Actually, I think this is gonna line up a bit better. I could change everything, but I don't want to at this point. 
splitter goes here. And then like that. Like that. And like that. That should do it. Alright, let's set our requests. Uh, all of these stack to 50, so 8,000 is our target. One. What's that? Two. Oh, wait. Let's do. Let's ask for two train loads of each. It's going to have a lot of trouble running out with that. Actually, I'll just do slightly more than one train load because it's so slow. Theoretically, it should be down to a thousand before it requests some more, but I've seen it not behave that way too many times to trust it on that. Uh, let's actually set the name of the station first. Two, three, and four. Fantastic. And this one. Uh, quantum. Atomic. Subatomic. And force field. Quantum. Whoops. Uh, atomic, subatomic, and force field. Right, that should be working already. I'm surprised we're not seeing a train coming yet. Request stack. Oh, there we go. Both at the same time. Alright, what's first? Radiation data? And quantum. Alright, it's going to take at least four train trips on each side before we see that working. Um, but I don't see... I think it's probably best to just ignore this block for a minute. Um, and we'll come back to check that it's all working after that. So that is energy catalog and broad energy catalog. The difference in the icons is a lot clearer when they're nice and big. All right, how is our rough data storage sub? Oh, that is completely saturated. That's what I want to see. So it was just that we weren't moving the scrap because we didn't have the pickup set up properly over here. Fantastic. I don't suppose we've got any copper in storage at this stage. Nope. So we are presumably bottlenecking on copper at the moment. I should really set up a dynamic color display for these things to make it really clear at a glance how much we've got. Alright, what was the next step? Um, and do I want to do it here or way down here? I think we'll do it here. Drop that over there. Hit spiders to make a start on filling this out. We don't need this lying around anymore. That's much better. Definitely not going to take quite so many trips to 
fill this stuff out now. Maybe four or five, though. Actually, I don't know if I resupplied them after they dropped off some scaffolding over here earlier. Oh. Just a tiny bit of belt. Do I have some on me? No. Spiders. Oh. Spiders already got it. Fantastic. And it... I think it's dropping off something that it already had here. Oh well. Next is... Polarization data. Look at that go. It's like a spray. Alright, back down you go. We still haven't finished placing all these particle accelerators. Uh, what are we still trying to build over here? We're back to chests. Understandable, it's not like we ever build a rail block with no chests. Except for the fluid one. That looks really nice, I love that. Doesn't look like we're having any trouble keeping up with our demand for fluid. Uh, this is getting a bit more full than I would have liked. Yeah, I thought I was being excessive with all of these storage tanks, but maybe not. It does, I'm dead, look nice. Oh, this. Indeed. Yeah, that's my new screensaver. Okay. Uh, have you still not got the scaffolding to finish this? Really? I think I will make some dedicated scaffolding spiders. Okay, so what was next? Let's grab our little... Dropped onto the ground blueprint thing over here. We really haven't left much to... We could almost just fit this in the block over there already. But, uh, no, I'm not too worried about that. Especially considering all the train inputs and outputs we need. Uh, so this requires negative 273. We also need negative 100. I think we will do the direct insert for significant data for now. And... I don't know that we're going to be doing anything else... Like, this will be temporary. This will probably be the entire block. Until we move on to better things later on. So let's review. Um, I don't actually have enough computers to do a rate calc to check what we need here. So that just needs energy insight, which we're making locally. Um, spits out blank data cards. 
Energy Insight also spits out blank data cards. Catalog, broad, and two kinds of fluid input. Also Holmium Table and Plate. And I think that's everything. We need two, three, three solid outputs. Four, once you include the junk data cards. Take care, Whiskers. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out. Purge it. No. No purge. Um... Let's see. Makes the lurk whiskers. Alright. Well, while we're thinking about that, let's put our... Why is this... Oh, it's like fake rail. Let's put our usual signals and stations in place. Train stop goes... I can't even really see for sure where it goes. Where are our spiders? Yet over here. I should probably make a blueprint that includes the default stations. That would definitely make things a bit easier. Have we still not got any electromagnetic field data? Oh, here it comes. But something's wrong. Something's wrong with the loader. Again. But I think that was probably a knock-on effect from when there was a problem with it earlier. Especially considering all of these other resources haven't had any trouble. Um, let's just pick all of these up now. We just need 100, almost 200. That'll be done soon. Why don't I limit all of these chests to zero? Except this one. And then we know that will get loaded uh, precisely. And we'll come back and fix that later. I wonder why it's only ever electromagnetic field data that gets stuck like this. Probably something to do with the rate. We're not producing it at full speed. There's not enough blank data cards. Uh, there's not enough blank data cards because there's not enough rough data Duh? Oh, this is actually... the yeah, output is full. We're missing copper. Oh no. Oh no. Copper's caught up with us. What do we do? Um... I did say there was... a big copper mine. That's 9.4 million. That's 14 million. Dare I set up copper mines that are technically out in the open, even though they're really, really far from any spider nests? Perhaps. Let's find our construction spiders. Uh, I didn't think it would take longer than it would take me to actually say that. Oh, there they are.
and there was copper out here, wasn't there? 18 million. This one's, that's actually bigger, or at least the total is higher. It should probably also be easier to connect rail to it in the short term. I need a... I think we found... Oh, we found a few. No, those are... Um, what do you call it? So, some of these are just... Asteroid belts, but no, we've actually got two planets with iron core fragments. Here's a copper one. Waterless really far away lots of biters really big 54 minute day night cycle 38% solar Manel Scott where is Manel Scott what's the parent Merline Merline oh there it is it's near Anglos, which is where we're getting our um, barrel core fragments from. Robot interference wind is relatively low. Warm, waterless desert, treeless, earthy mountains. Um, yeah, 8,726 is kind of big. Uh, Nalvis is actually 5.6 thousand, 5.7 thousand, really. Huh? Oh, not again. This train was supposed to pick up polarization data. Okay. What? Why is this not... Oh. Of course. Okay. Let me just... Alright. Pick those up, please. Was it always, uh, was it this station specifically that had a problem last time? Your UPS seems much higher now. What did you change? Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the only thing I changed is RAM. I got slightly faster RAM and dual channel. That's it. Um, I'm still under 3,000, uh, with the RAM speed. That's as high as, at 2.9 something something is as high as my motherboard will go. Uh, but long story short, I was stuck with a single stick for quite a while there. It's actually less RAM, unfortunately. Because <laughs> I got, um, the stick that I got was very on sale at the time and I needed it at short notice so that's why I got it um but yeah it's it's actually only 16 gig now to a pair of eights uh Mr. Goodnight welcome welcome hope you're doing well good to see you again yeah I'm seriously considering um getting the same pair again and getting four sticks not that that'll push it beyond dual channel, but I won't have to worry about memory shortages, like, ever. Actually, I, I mean, you really shouldn't have to worry about memory shortages with 16 gig, but on my old computer with 16 gig, I would get, like, out-of-memory errors when I was running a browser with a bunch of tabs in certain games. 
CPU from 2013 is only at 50%. Yeah. Yeah, if I'd known how much RAM would be a bottleneck, uh, I would definitely have got a motherboard that could have gone higher. Um, but it's all fairly satisfactory, honestly. Um, okay, so... Let's pick these up again. Actually. And we're trying to put... Actually, I know what I can do here. I'll grab one stack of polarization data. And I'll use even distribution to put not quite enough into the trains, actually. Wait, what? That's still not enough? Oh, because it just put in like one stack into each of them. There we go. And even distribute the rest of these again. Okay. This is all balanced-ish. I'm just gonna try bumping up how many that we have to have. Well, okay, if I if I set the stack limit for each of these to seven, that should prevent it from being too imbalanced. The only problem is we won't have as much storage, but considering how slow uh, electromagnetic field data is, even if this is going at max rate at seven per second, um, I don't think limiting it to seven times 24 I, I don't think that's going to have much of a negative impact on anything. Okay, what about elsewhere? We're not... What what I'm curious of, though, is we're not getting trains stuck up here. Which has the same setup. Oh, I did have a higher provide stack threshold. Maybe that's all it takes. Let's, um... For science, let's put this to 240. And I'll remove the limit on these chests. So that is a train load and a half that has to be here before a train will come to pick these up. It should be sufficiently balanced and everything. Okay. Um, I really want more blank data cards. To think we're completely out of copper up here is a bit disturbing. Um, should we go on an interstellar adventure for more copper? Okay, one thing that's definitely going to affect my decision making for this is see how far we can aim our oh what is this what 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 it definitely wasn't biters they would have destroyed more than some belts can these things misfire or something it doesn't look like that that's what would have happened um, that's the second mysterious damage thing that we've found lately. While the spiders are here, I guess I should get them to build these mines. Uh, fast productivity. Here we go. Auto save. CME? No, I don't think so. They're only 80% accurate. We've got quite a lot of them, though. Uh, I even added a couple more recently. We've got 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think this is 9, 10, 11, 12. I thought I had 10 earlier. And I must have not noticed these ones. But we added even more. 13, 14, 16, 18. We have 18 Meteor defense installations. So if they have an 80% chance each to shoot down an asteroid... Um, I forget the exact math, but basically it is incredibly improbable for a meteor to get through. Also, I don't actually see a meteor here. There's no RoboPort network, so it wouldn't have been automatically picked up. Maybe you hit the 1% jackpot? Maybe. Um... Yeah, I really don't know what's hitting our base sometimes. I think it hit here as well. That That is not shaped like a CME, right? It looks like... You know what it does look like? It looks like the weapon delivery cannon was aimed in the wrong spot. Don't tell me it has, like, a chance of firing in the wrong place or so- Oh my goodness. Oh no. That meteorite is in the wrong place to be the culprit for this. Can run out of projectile for the defense cannon? No, I think, judging by the shape of this, because I've seen them- I've seen them hit the biter nests. Let's see if we can spot them somewhere. Okay, this is at 50 something percent. This one's about to fire. Okay, so we're looking for a square of revealed area somewhere. It should be popping up any second now, and then we can see the projectile land. Uh, I'm having trouble finding one. Here we go. I think we missed it. Yeah, there you go. Gives you a feel for how big the area of effect is, just a little bit. I think these things can misfire. I think we've been shelling our own base occasionally. Artie's are blasting, yes. Well then, um, this one's not going to fire anyway, so the thing I wanted to investigate was, can we aim these things interstellar? I should think not. Merlim and Manel Scott is, would be our target. Uh, no, it looks like it's only going to let us aim inside of the system. Which, of course, makes a lot more sense. Okay, so... Let's just finish up with our spiders over here first. Um, so I think what we would have to do... Is that going to have coverage? No. I think what we would have to do if we're going to colonize that planet is send a lot of stuff. Like, we'd have to send everything that it takes to run the weapon delivery cannons. Like, it was a pain, it was a bit of a nuisance to set up the 
We actually did it with just one cargo landing pad. Uh, we've got a complicated system here for delivering various uh, resources and only when they drop below a certain threshold. Well, only when one of them drops below a certain threshold do we send a rocket with all of the uh, appropriate resources. But I think, honestly, it's a lot easier just to have multiple cargo landing pads. Um, the fact that it's waterless means there's definitely no islands that we can take that we can core mine off of. So that is a really, really, really big planet full of biters that we would have to clear out for copper core fragments. And that's the only one in our list so far for copper, which is what we actually need right now. Spaceships are the next thing we get that can get us from A to B, right? And that's quite far away. Astronomic Science Pack 3. I mean, we do have an infinite supply of every resource. We can just... We will get those blank data cards eventually. But obviously, I don't want to wait that long. Uh, let's do... It's a little tiny uranium mine here. 45k, I'm not even going to worry about that. Okay. Let's do some rail coming out from here. What is this? It is a coal mine. We'll have a bit of rail to jump off of that later. Okay. We're going to make a little gap in our wall here. It's literally on the other side of the planet from where there's any threat. But I'm still not going to make it too vulnerable. And where did this go? Over here. All right. Uh, let's figure out what our station's gonna look like. Left side or right side? Left side. I mean right side. Actually, how many belts do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Call it six. Blue belts. So nostalgic. Okay. Oh, the underground reach is so far. This is facing the wrong way. Also, I used the version that uses pipes. For a lot of these. Well, I can just do a deconstruction planner to remove the pipes. Uh, the underground belts, though, are all backward. So let's get rid of those as well. Fast productivity. Pointing this way. Uh, 
What's the rate from these? Oh, I can't tell because sp uh, speed modules, speed beacon. Let's do this one facing that way. Go the other way. That goes there. And then uh, that's not quite right. Let's bring this up here. We're gonna do the slowest side ones, just squeezing in the side there. This goes this way. Don't forget the corner. Two more. just get the spiders to walk over these. And that should be that. Bunch of extra undergrounds are not needed here. right side, wasn't it? Should be the most convenient. One, two. Can't see what I'm doing. Too many spider legs. ID is correct. Fantastic. Substations, please. Gonna need a big pole. And then next to our rail. This will be fine. Is that going to be correct? Let's see. Also, we need to connect power. Fantastic. So I think that's everything here. We just need to... Make sure our spiders build all of this on the way home. And once that's done, we should be getting an amount of copper. We should probably add a stacker to it as well. That seems like a good idea. Missing belt bottom right corner before the balancer. Let's see. Oh, true. Thank you. Uh, RF Holloway, 
welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And we're going to bump up the train limit here to five because it's so remote. As long as there's nowhere else that trains on this line are trying to get to, uh, we've sort of got our stacker built into the rail network here. As long as that condition is still met. Is 30 million iron that I marked because it's so hard to see on the um, on the map sometimes with uh, alien biomes. Hey, Seaforcat. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How was your stream today? Uh, okay. How much have we got here? 8.4k. We should see a train coming to pick this up fairly soon. Or was that... No, 240. 12,000 before a train will pick it up, actually. We're also missing... Huh? I must have configured this wrong. Let's have a look. Uh, that's set to everything still. That's why. Okay, so this needs to be specifically polarization data. And this needs to be specifically radiation data. And there we go. Seep says hi. He's very tired. Fair enough. Know that feeling. Uh, these, I think, are all set correctly. I mean, I thought all of them were set correctly, but... Here we are. So we're just waiting on electromagnetic field data to get our catalogs. And all three of these, apparently, to get our broad catalogs. It was also his birthday. Happy birthday to Seaforcut. Alright. Um, we've got force field data. It's just not quite enough to trigger a delivery. Oh. Oh no, those are the inputs. Yeah, I had this set up so we can extend it. Force field data is bottlenecked on electromagnetic field data as well. And electromagnetic field data is bottlenecked on copper, which is not looking so good. We do have a bit of copper here. Blank data cards need copper. Uh, this stuff is just lacking proton stream, which we've got 35,000 of. What? Oh. Oh, there's an incorrect pipe over here. Alright, spiders, away. Sneaky pipe. Where was it? Over here? I think we just have to remove that. And then... Almost all of our... Uh, proton stream problems are solved. What about this side? Fantastic. And it's about to run out of blank data cards here as well, but good to know that's working now. Uh, 
All right. Uh, I suppose let's go over and finish building the last few of these. Let's check on Nervous. Do we actually have trains coming here already? Fantastic. No path. Are you trying to get to our new station? Yes. Where's the problem? The spiders haven't built all of the rail. They might have actually run out. Yeah, it looks like it. They still have power. Alright, let's go pick up some more rail. I'm pretty sure, yep, we have it here. Fantastic. I guess we've got, like, five trains trying to come to our new station right now. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I think they're all trying to go there. It's probably going to be full by the time one of them gets here. Okay. Uh, let's just give those a minute. And... We still don't have all of the particle accelerators. I hope we haven't hit such a dire straits that we're not making things here just yet. We're good. I'm seriously beginning to consider... Um, considering all of the different types of core fragments that we've got not moving, and each different type of core fragment spits out some regular core fragments, which means more of the basic resources. I might actually have to set up or maybe just adjust this one. We've already got logistic bots here, so I could probably go ahead and universalize this instead of having separate uh, drop-offs. We could just use active provider chests. Um, but as sinful as it sounds, if you look at it myopically, uh, it might be time to start dumping, for example, Holmanite. Just so that we can keep the core fragment processing going, so we can get a higher throughput of infinite iron and copper and so on. Uh, obviously, we're not dumping Cryonite right now, it's in dire straits actually. What's happening here? No way. We have too much uranium? Nope, Lem. Nope, I am not here. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we are actually stopped on uranium core fragments. Forty eight K uranium core fragments, eight point four K stone. And it's just not getting picked up. Look at that. Remember how long this um uranium block was just completely empty for? Now it's just completely saturated. All of the uh, Coverex systems are actually not running because they don't have room for output. Wow. Although, 
I think there might be room for improvement with this system by the look of this part. Quite possibly. How do I... Hold on. We've literally got... We've got chests and chests and chests and chests and chests full of T-38. And Coverex stopped working because there's no room to output the 238. Um. What am I supposed to do with this? We could make another storage block and store 238, I suppose. Time to change ammo in weapon delivery cannon? <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't know, I don't like putting, um, scorch marks everywhere, to be honest. Alright, let's see if we've got some uranium, uh, some copper, rather, blowing just yet. Spiders needed to pick up rail, I almost forgot. Let's bring them back over here. And after that, come over here to place this one bit of belt that I missed. We've still got iron mines that are looking fairly healthy. Oh, here's a copper mine. 10 million. 7.9 million. We'll grab those next, I suppose. Really doesn't take as long as you'd think for millions of copper to disappear. Alright, what are we doing here? Uh, that's right. We were going to finalize our temporary build of tier 2 energy signs. And what do we need? Catalog, broad catalog, and negative 100 fluid. No, it's negative 273 and negative 100. So I think we'll do... Throughput for each of these is going to be very, very slow, so we can just do a super basic drop-off like this. And we'll do a fluid drop-off here. One for each temperature. And then 25 degree output down the bottom. Some stations. catalog. That's a bit easier. So let's put the energy catalog and negative 100 over here. Broad Negative 273 over here. Double check that that's what we need. Negative 273. Negative 100. 
we also need chromium plate and chromium cable. Hmm. I'll just do some stations on the side for those. Got plenty of space. Uh, let's not forget our big power poles. Find the middle of this thing. And Stations go here. And this is going to be requesting uh chromium plate. Chromium plate. Holmium cable goes here. Throughput for those should be fairly low as well. Six and eight, or seven and eight, really. So considerably less than one belt. line up the same? Yeah, it does. That's going to look slightly different. Let's just do it like this. And then... Sutters. So our outputs are... Energy Science Pack 1 and 2... Blank data card and junk data card. Since we've got so much room for outputs over here, um, let's do some more stations. Instead of doing the complicated precise loaders, Pickup station. And... Should we do short trains for the sides? I would eventually like to run it at high speed. We could always force a delivery to get it started. Let's do loaders. How much science is a single cargo wagon? What does this stack to? Uh, let's turn on our debug. 200. Okay. Maybe I will do a single cargo wagon. Uh, for the sciences. So we'll do... Um, even just a chest will be enough, considering the rate of production. 
Bear in mind, this is a sort of temporary block we're looking at. And... I haven't really left enough room. I just realized we have two physical junk out. Oh no, wait, this will be fine. Yep. We'll do the 25 degree thermo fluid probably here. Chests. Let's do a usual balanced loader. So I think we're going to swap this around a bit. Uh, the blank data cards are going to go to the right. It's looking a bit weird. Okay. What's the total rate of blank data cards from here? 8.2. Don't have to worry about belt sides or anything. Spiders over so we can see a bit better. How many inputs do these have? Just two. So I think we'll just have substation here. That's too far. Here. That's not quite right. How many do we have here? Seven each side. Okay. Like so. And like so. Actually, it might. I think we'll do it this way. So all of those are connected. We need this to connect to that as well, which is looking like a bit of a problem. I guess it'll have to just go round. a little bit much. We need 13. It's not going to happen. Okay. And then... 
that wouldn't happen to line up either. Maybe I could make it line up. Let's go 9 to 14. 7 and 7? That's... I must have miscounted. Tragic. Alright, 5, 5, and 3. Actually, if this thing reached just one tile further, make that a long pipe. Does this go? That's actually really good. And then, however many tiles this is. Okay. And we need our. It's actually only this block that uses the negative a hundred. So we'll bring that down here. Let's figure out the belts first, I think. This is a little bit off center, actually. Should we move all this? I don't think so. All right. The entire block just needs to merge these together and then do a split. I guess we could do it this way. Looks a little weird. Can I move all of these down a little bit? Yes, but it's kind of a nuisance at this point. Yeah, maybe not. It's not as bad as it looks. We can center it while we're at it. That should do it. down one more tile. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Whatever. We'll make it work. Actually, it might look a little better if that comes down there. So what's this supposed to be? Junk data cards and blank data cards. Blank conveniently fits here. 
So junk data cards, I think we will output here. It's actually a good fit. Filter output junk data card. And last but not least, our actual desired outputs. Might need another underground pipe here. Uh, science and science. Actually, since that one goes directly there, don't see why we wouldn't do this. And this one. Trains for this station and this station. Energy science one and energy science two. Fantastic. What else? Got our fluid output. Uh, we've got our belt input. can go. Which pipe is this? Uh, should be negative 100. And this one is negative 275. Okay. That's actually looking like almost a perfect fit. Damn. I feel like it would look a little more consistent if we move these up a tile, and that goes there. Somehow. Also, we need another substation. We're going to need a couple, actually. Nope. Even worse, we're going to need three. subs over here as well. That just barely doesn't reach. Oh, wait, no, that's good. Yeah, I thought I remembered that being able to reach over one belt. And this one as well. Uh, these are going to be priority pickups. Because we need to get rid of these things or else our actually desired product is going to stop. Uh, so this is light data cards. And this is junk data cards and the red fluid. 25 degrees. Fantastic. Also, um, Let's fix this wiring up. I guess if the sub... Wait, what? Oh, that does just reach. 
I couldn't quite see the wire. I guess if the substation's up there, we're just going to have to connect this like so. Doesn't look great. This one goes here. Uh, this will be junk data card divided by 24. We're missing some pumps, but I think we're almost done here. That obviously needs a belt. I don't think we actually set up the requests for these. But let's do a checklist. Volume plate is coming from here, significant data, track insert. Energy catalog. Did we forget? No, this is... This is energy insight. Energy catalog and... Broad energy catalog. Needs to be delivered to these as well. What's the rate, I wonder? 6.67 per second, and 0.33 per second. I could make them share a belt, but I don't really think there's any need for that. Might have to move that substation. And set up. Okay. Energy catalog, broad energy catalog. These are obviously going in here. I think that's just about it. We do need that to be powered. These are already powered. Okay. Big pole down this way. Perhaps. That's going to look a bit weird, I think. Looks like we're resupplied. Let's head back. Start filling out the requests for these things. Energy catalog and negative 100. Um, I don't know what these stack to. We haven't made any energy catalogs yet. We're still waiting on that electromagnetic field data, which is making, waiting on, uh, ultimately copper. Did we get the copper flowing downstairs? I think so, otherwise this would have stopped inserting by now. That would be a yes, although I only see one train on the way at the moment. Um, there's 21k copper here. And a train limit of 5. Shouldn't there be some trains queued up? Oh, here we go. That would be a yes. I do see copper in these furnaces. Wait, how's there 113,000 copper here if we're suffering from shortages? No way. No way. Uh... This is... 
Oh no, no, that's that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah, we are actually telling LTN that we've got copper plate here. So how is it? Output signals 113,000 copper plate. It is going to here. Provider stack threshold 300 is a lot less than 113,000. Um, how is it that we've got full... Okay, the fact that this is in motion tells me it hasn't been like this forever. Uh, but how do we have... 28 train loads of copper plate over here right now. Okay, multiply that by two. We've got like 48 train loads of copper plate. Copper ore is still not... Hold on. We have 1.1 million copper plate still in storage over here. I think we got ahead of our actual shortage of copper. Um, how is it not getting to orbit, though? You're kidding me. Why are there no cargo rocket sections here? Um, cargo rocket sections have stopped producing. What's happened? All of the inputs seem to be saturated? Except for here, which is... that's fine, that's normal. We've got cargo rocket sections being output to here. And then... This is turned around the wrong way. Hitting me. Wait, what about this side? How is this not working? No LDS. LDS is supposed to come from here. I think this is because this train was stuck here for a long time when it's not supposed to be. Um, requesting 4.8 thousand rocket control units. which is 480 stacks, which is three train loads. And we very much have room for more than three train loads here. And we're doing a balanced unload. So that should never have happened. Uh, request stack threshold is a full train load. Yeah, I don't know why it would have done that. Um, I guess we'll just bump it down to like... Two train loads? But, yeah. Cargo rocket sections. Um, those are handy. Did not take long to unload. So where's our copper plate? Over here. Priority is bumped up. Since we've got cargo rocket silos that are not ready to launch. But I'm guessing that's not the only one. Oh no. That is not great. What I wonder is, when on Earth did I accidentally turn that belt around? I don't think it was deliberate. So LDS is now 
making its way into this system as well. Okay. I guess we're going to have our blank data cards uh, sooner or later. Currently it's heading to drop off cargo rocket sections to a different uh, different block though. How are you not done with this mod pack yet? Uh, because it'll take 600 years. It's a big mod pack. That goes here. All of these are powered now. So, on the plus side, we did set up a copper mine before we ran out of copper. Let's get the spiders to fix up this thing. And this one as well, I suppose. I wonder where else we've hit. I, I can only guess that those were from artillery shells that misfired or something. Baltimore reason I don't want to fire nukes with these things. Unless it's at a planet that I don't have anything on. Okay. I really want to see this block uh, working or not working. But we're going to have to wait a little while for those uh, like data cards. Uh, we could probably put substation over here, actually. That's fine. And here. Chromium cable and plate could be relatively easy. Plate of the Holmium variety. I can never remember the stack size. Holmium plate could be over here somewhere. Here it is. A hundred. Okay. So, 16k, or 32k, request a couple of train loads. Actually, it's so slow, let's just set it to a little bit more than one train load. And don't forget to tell LTN what we've already got here. That should be fine. Don't forget to put in some inserters. And over here. Only in cable. was over here, wasn't it? Uh, cable stacks to 50. I did actually remember that one. So... A bit more than one train load. This one's already set up properly. Fantastic. What about energy catalog? Uh, I need to check what it stacks to. 50. Wait, no. Uh, I can't tell what we're checking the stack size of here. Let's see. 50 and 50. Okay then. 
So we're going to request 9,000. And don't forget the fluid, which is negative 100. Broad energy quest threshold. Whoops. And negative two seventy three. And one more double check. Uh before the train gets here. Oh, I haven't actually connected this one yet. But yeah, that's the negative 273 right there. And... Probably connect that over like so. It's 14, 13 tiles I need. 5, 5, and 3. There's our negative two, uh, negative one hundred. Fantastic. All right, that just leaves electromagnetic field data holding up absolutely everything. Um, these two are also held up by blank data cards, same as electromagnetic. Uh, field data. Blank data cards are held up by Hopper, which is held up by the lack of cargo rocket sections temporarily in our system downstairs. Where is it? Copper. Oh, I see... I see rockets being ready. So now we just have to wait for eight stack inserters. Uh, less than 90 per second. To load up 50,000. Let's say 80 per second. 625 seconds. We're looking at 10 minutes or so. Uh, add another one or two. We're probably looking at like 12 to 15 minutes before we get the blank data cards where they need to go. Depending on where the next train load gets sent as well. Alright. But yeah, I think, I think, I think that is Energy Science 2. In the short term, I think we'll do... Wow, that looks weird. Uh, I think we'll do a small drop-off or to put Energy Science Pack 2s over here, maybe? Or should I start on a rail block for all of the sciences? Might be worth doing that in the meantime. It's going to be a pain moving all of this. Maybe I should just have trains pick up uh, these science packs from here. In any case, um, the stuff that we need energy science pack 2 for in the short term we should be able to just cart it around. Okay. 
think what I might do is set up a little reminder. And eventually, instead of using the inserter, let's do it over here. Global playback, show alert, energy science pack 2, uh, miscellaneous, there we go. And the condition is energy science pack 2 greater than 0. Fantastic. All right. What else should we do, uh, be doing in our rail block, other than tidying this part up? I have to say it took a lot more than I expected it to, just to throw together some energy too. Although some of this is a bit more scalable. Energy, science pack two. I should make that blueprint I was talking about. Let's add a space rail block down here. Get the spiders to build that out. Head down this way. Another one of these. Wait, where am I going? This one. Okay. We're gonna add... If I can stop... Picking construction bots. We're going to make a rail block blueprint with the most common train stop layout. You could set up a rail block on Nalvis for the new Holmium product, Holmium Solenoid. Uh, might do. Let's see. Where even is it? Sol. Sol. Oh, we haven't researched it yet. Solenoid. Uh, holmium cable plus holmium plate. That's pretty easy. Is this an intermediate product? Benefits from productivity modules? Yes, it can be prod moduled. Okay. Let's do some stations. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. Uh, standard drop off. And. Uh, we need more scaffolding for this. All right, let's bring the spiders home. Actually, let's get them to drop off more of this rail first. Actually, they probably don't have enough scaffolding to make that happen. All right, back to the mall. Fantastic. I don't suppose we've got copper yet, not just yet. That's right, I did calculate it would take like 10 minutes to load. Which can easily keep up with our overall need for it for the foreseeable future, but 
when we need it right now, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, if I'd realized what the shape of this whole thing was going to be, maybe I would have put these stations a bit further down. But it's really not going to affect that much. The overall throughput for the plate and cable is going to be really slow here. I kind of do want to go for that um, uh, copper core fragment planet, but it'd be very time consuming for something that is, you know, overall kind of simple. Might be something I do off stream. 67% threat, really big planet, no water. That's actually pretty scary. Well, not just scary, but it would take a huge effort to clear out. I mean, after all, it's taking forever to clear out Nalvis, and that's a smaller planet, and all of our logistics are much more straightforward here. I do suspect very strongly that it's the interplanetary artillery that's misfiring or something that's causing things to be destroyed on Nalvis. Uh, just because we've never seen that happen before I started using the interplanetary artillery. And I think it never happened before we used it on Nalvis, so somehow it's either biters are getting places they shouldn't, or I don't know what else. Alright, back to base. After that one, please. Plague Rocket? I'm not going to Plague Rocket Nalvis. Also, doesn't it destroy any, um... I think it's Vitamalunge. I'm not sure. Okay. Meanwhile, on Nalvis, we're down to the last 110 stacks of copper plate. Of course, once it gets to orbit, it has to travel down this entire main bus before it reaches the rail system. Oh well. Let's turn on personal logistics. You can do a nav sweep to see if there are any biter nests inside, if you suspect that. Oh, there definitely are. Um, and the thing, the reason I don't do that is, uh, from what I understand, once you reveal them, they'll start expanding and using UPS and stuff like that. So I really don't want to reveal them until we're ready to clear them out. Um... How do you make the solenoid? Oh, there it is. It doesn't tell us. Okay. So should I do... Where would I even put it? I could put chests into four of these and have bots deliver the tier two um, energy science packs and have trains bring them. But I suspect like the stuff that we can research with what we've got plus only energy science pack two is going to be sh so short lived. 
that I may as well just manually take it over. Can make it a regular assembler or the space one. Okay. I guess we could take steps to build the next science pack. Um, let's try and figure out what's going to be most useful. Artillery shell range wouldn't be bad or anything. In fact, one thing I could do right now is probably take advantage of the artillery shell range we already do have. That'll be a lot fewer targets for the interplanetary artillery. Since we're already shelling this area anyway. I should be a bit more liberal with it. We've got literally like tens of thousands of shells. And I know we've got a million copper in storage. We just don't have the copper ore stored as well. should think more in terms of what this costs in playtime rather than physical resources. Look at those shells fly. Right. Bit more. Fantastic. And a little bit of shelling this area, especially the spawners. Uh, it is possible, if I overdo it, to have the Biter's counterattack hard enough to break this spot. But there's so little left of them over here, I don't think that's going to happen. It's all just expansions. Alright, cool. Have we just about got our copper now? Fantastic. And the answer is yes. Yes, we do. And it's more than halfway to our train system. Beautiful. I really want to see that Energy Science Pack 2 in motion as soon as possible. First thing is data cards. How fast does this actually make them? 23.8 per second. And if we add all of these blocks together, data card consumption is drum roll uh it's only 24.9 per second so we can just about go full speed already that's pretty good i 
Maybe I should make another data card block. I think we should, actually. That's probably a good way to spend a little bit of time while we wait for something. Get ahead of uh, future bottleneck. Do you have space trains? I can only see the tracks in SE. Uh, I do have space trains. Uh, you can just use regular trains on the space rail, if that's what you're wondering. Arthi, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Look at those beautiful spidery bones. Okay. Actually, this is a good time to find out just how many trips it takes to fill uh, fill a block with scaffolding. Thanks. Your base is massive. Uh, thank you, I think. I just started in SE, got my first platform out. Nice, congrats. Oh, I just messed up the order for this guy. Let me get in the leader, so that if I move around it doesn't mess things up. Seems like we're carrying enough scaffolding now to finish this in two trips. Uh, pro tip, never ever delete scaffolding when the Spidertrons near it. They will disappear into the void instantly, if you're not careful. Having them walk around while you're constructing scaffolding like this is fine. But if you delete it under their feet, they may just vanish. Found that one out the hard way. Copper. Yes. And it's going exactly where I really want it. Not that I know where else copper plate would need to go. Not here, actually. Didn't take long to remember. And there go our blank data cards. Fantastic. Actually just happened... It just so happens that um, all six of these will produce a little bit less than half a belt. And then seven of them goes slightly over half a belt, but this goes to the other half. So, no worries there. Um, where are we? Picking up scaffolding. Seems that's already done. We're running low. There should be a train... Not a train, a rocket. Coming with scaffolding right now. No, that one's manual launch. Um, did I set up a scaffold cargo rocket in the rail network? We're actually at the point where I don't remember some of these things. There's... I'm pretty sure there's a rocket set up to automatically refill the scaffolding here. But I'm not sure, and I don't remember, and this might be it. Except it is a manual launch. Possibly... Wow, that's a lot of useful stuff. I should probably send that to the mall. Um, case in point, I forgot about this. This is exactly the sort of stuff we ran out of a little bit earlier. Okay. Launch. Um, but yeah, I don't actually know... If I have a cargo rocket silo being loaded with scaffolding and automatically coming to the mall. 
Um, I strongly suspect this should be it. Oh, I didn't mean to launch that. Oh no. Oh no. There's not going to be room. Go inserters. Faster. Uh-oh. We need to get this down to like a hundred cargo, or a bit less. Um, I'm hearing exploding noises, but that's just the bots. How's it taking this long? Just finished launching, I guess. I did aim it at the mall, didn't I? <laughs> Nervous Orbit Mall. Launch on cargo full. It shouldn't have automatically launched unless there was... unless this was empty. But also, I'm not seeing... I'm not actually seeing the rocket anywhere. I am... very confused. Did we just lose the rocket? Um, uh, hello? Where did our rocket go? I'm 97.9% sure there's only one cargo landing pad called Nervous Orbit Mall. And that's this one. It shouldn't have automatically launched unless this was empty. And even if it did, we should have seen, like, cargo things landing. Maybe a visual bug? Then where did the 50,000... Cargo, uh, 50,000 sp space platform go. Where did the 50,000 space platform go? It just deleted? Yeah, it seems like it. What the hell? There's nowhere else that it could have gone. There's 29,000 scaffolding over here. But yeah, that is... really bizarre. I think that might actually be a bug. Well. Um, we do have the scaffolding being built by what's supplied by the rail network down here. What are you doing here? Oh no. One coal. Maybe it launched somewhere in general vicinity? I'm pretty sure we changed it to the mall before we clicked launch on cargo full, right? Uh, how would we even find it if it launched to general vicinity? Well. Um, yeah, we just need some space capsules to get this launching again. I guess I could request some. I'm very upset to find that this has happened somehow. We put a lot of work into getting this to carefully load things. 
from the logistic network. Drag a box of deconstruction planner over the base. Um, I mean, there's a lot to look at there. I could do... Cargo... Will it find cargo pods like this if they're... If they're lying about? Or does it not work that way? Is it a different entity? Well, whatever the case, um, the thing to do now is request some space capsules. Okay, maybe not 40, I think literally one at a time will do for this place. Input signals, negative 100. Wait, what? It's already requesting... Space capsules here? Or does this use... It uses short trains. Is it connected to the logistic network? It's not. We already pulsed in... Request for a hundred space capsules here. Grubber deck. How is it that we're not ever getting... Oh, because it's request stack threshold 160, that's why. So if we do this now... We should see... A delivery scheduled for space capsules to this station uh, in the near future. Let's just double check everything. Short trains permitted, request stack threshold 40, requesting a hundred of these. Also, we're requesting like one. No, that's not going to work because of the request stack threshold. Yeah, that should trigger a delivery of space capsules. It takes a little while, especially on Nalvis, for LTN to wake up. I'll check back on there a little bit later. Um, well, we still have some scaffolding over here, so... Why don't we go finish this, and then we'll duplicate the uh, blank data card build. How long ago was the autosave? Uh, I think it's every half an hour. The save length, uh, the save time is getting a bit long, so I don't want it to be too often. Um, still not seeing a train scheduled to deliver these. We do have them, right? We have seven. We're furiously trying to catch up with the demand for space capsules at the moment, because there was a, a recent run on them, I think. Whoa. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, what were we doing besides that? I should probably drop the... Well, if I drop the request stack threshold here to like 1, we will get a delivery of a space capsule here relatively soon, I think. Otherwise, we would have had to fill a short train for that delivery to trigger. I 
I should add a symbol here as well. Okay, so there it is. And it's going somewhere else entirely. Probably because it's a higher priority, which I forgot to account for. Because whenever there's a cargo rocket that's not ready to launch here, the priority gets bumped up by one. That doesn't seem to be happening here at the moment, though. But it's possible that was the case a short time ago. Um, could you please finish? Oh, I did this again. Follow the leader, please. And... Copy all of this. Paste over here. Pretty soon we'll be doubling, we'll double our rate of zero blank data cards per second. Fantastic. We are not picking up copper again just yet. Yeah, this is the downside of this particular system for making it available to every size train. Um, we could maybe not do that. Maybe with the main bus stuff, we could just assume that there's going to be enough of whatever resource. Maybe it's not so bad to have a train waiting here for a time. If it comes to that. Okay. Uh, is this almost built already? Fantastic. That's the power of constructor trons. We need some more pumps, though because I'm the only one who carries them. What do we got here? Rough data storage substrates are on the way. Um, this is all connected correctly, seems like it. Fantastic. Okay. That didn't take very long at all. Did we get some production over here? Not yet. How many blank data cards do we have? 7.6k. Painfully close. Here we go. It is just copper that we're trying to catch up with. 142 per second. That is quite a lot. Could probably increase... I hesitate to ask for too much here, but theoretically we can fit 7.2 train loads. I would love to actually set this to 7.2 train loads and trust that the request stack threshold is never make going to make it go over that, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Uh, we'll set it to like... 4? Same thing over here. So hopefully... At least when there's a run on blank data cards later, after we catch up, the trains won't have to go into a frenzy straight away. And 
there's our first delivery of blank data cards. Where are you going with it? To this one, which is going to give us uh, electromagnetic field data, which has been the main problem here. Fantastic. All right, did we get any uh, two space capsules? Wait, no, it's picking up the space capsules from the from the local logistic network. Okay, I see how it is. Um, tell you what, you can just go home. Also, I don't know how... I guess we're producing space capsules here somewhere still. Yeah, there we go. Somehow. I guess I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, let's purge this thing. Okay, so Nervous Orbit Mall, launch on cargo full, and you are now requesting space platform. Okay, fantastic. This should have scaffolding in it in like 11 minutes or so. Well, actually, I remember setting a speed limit so we don't use 40,000 logistic bots to load this thing, so it might be a little bit longer than that. Alright, what's next? What is next? Does this require copper? It does. It's only one copper per material testing pack, but even so, um... I should move that to Nalvis for the productivity bonus. Relatively soon. That's right. We were going to try to figure out which science pack would be best to go for next. Um... Kind of hard to guess. Material 2 gives us uh, better accumulators. Energy capacity 50, mega, 50 megajoules. Isn't that 10 times as opposed to double what we get from... Yes, yes it is. Max input 250 kilowatts, max output 500 kilowatts. Uh, as opposed to... Max input 500, max output 5 megawatts. That's insane. That is... The tier 2 solar panel, uh, flat solar panel, is just double uh, the regular flat, flat solar panel. But the tier 2 accumulator is just off the charts. Um, what else? I do wish I could have the game not pause when I go to the research menu. Speed module 6. That might be good. I like energy 3. I think it gives the pylon substations... Uh, energy 2, I think, gives the pylon substations. That's why what one of the three or four reasons we're going for it. Uh, does energy 3 give us anything else? I guess it would be kind of maybe nice to have one of the threes checked off, but I'm guessing there's not much we can do with three by itself. When everything else is tier one. Uh, 
Um, the plague. That's bio four. That's not happening for ages. Maybe wide area beacons. That's also energy two. There's so many reasons we're looking forward to energy two. Also, I do not need quite so many uh, recycling facilities right now. It's going to be a little while before we get our scaffolding. We haven't quite run out of it just yet anyway. Uh, and we do have a block to build something in while we wait. Oh, here we go. Electromagnetic field data is at 9.2 thousand. It should be... I think it's at 10 thousand. It triggers a delivery. If you click on the energy 3 pack on the actual research tree, it's easier to see what it gives. Oh yeah, true. Uh, some upgrades. I'm not seeing any... Th oh, energy weapon damage 8. I guess that's one thing we can get without higher tiers for other things. Worker robot speed 8. Okay. Um, what else? Supercomputer 2. That's something. Spaceship requires threes for everything. Adaptive armor 5. 500 hit points? For a single 2x2? Two two. Okay. Anyway, let's pause the game less and get there sooner. Um... Are we actually... I think we've... We already had more... Then we could keep up with um, with the trains picking up copper plate. Wait, we already ran out of copper plate up here? Oh my goodness. Um, do we actually need more than one cargo rocket silo loading copper plate already? I was about to consider having another cargo landing pad for copper plate but it seems like before we do that what we need is more throughput for the copper plate from ground to orbit i do realize we're currently catching up after this wasn't working for a while but still what does it take Blank data card, six copper plate. That is not insubstantial. I liked the better supercomputers due to more efficient junk card recycling. Seems good. You can go for spaceships now. It doesn't need any other tier two sciences. Just astro. Spaceship. Uh, that's astro three. We don't have, we only have astro one for now. Although, that is definitely something tempting to go for next, I guess. Uh, before we do that, I think I will make... Oh, we've already got some spare. This might seem really, really overkill, but... Who cares? There is no overkill, there is only... Open fire, and I need to reload. And this means less reloading. 
Okay, so copper plate is going to go here. We have literally a million copper plate in storage, so... Decay. That should be that. And just to double check, this goes here. And this needs to go to Nalvis Orbit. Nalvis Orbit Copper Plate. If I can ever find it. There it is. What? That's Copper Cable. I didn't know I had a Copper Cable specific launcher. That doesn't sound right. Nalvis Orbit Copper plate, there it is. Launch on cargo full. Okay. Nervous orbit copper plate. Where's this copper cable that I set up? Is it part of the old base? I seriously don't remember ever setting up a launcher to send copper cable. Or did I just misread it and it was like holmium cable or something? Let's see. Uh, Nervous Orbit. Nervous Orbit Copper Plate. Yeah, did... Oh, no, there it is. Right after Yellow Science. Um... What was the next cargo landing pad that I built after Yellow Science? It doesn't keep the names forever if you, like, make a typo and then replace it, right? Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, we set that up so that we could make space rail without setting up all of that other infrastructure. Okay, then. Well, that means we could always just have copper cable delivered here instead of making it inefficiently. We seem to be constantly making copper cable uh, out of our precious copper plates. Maybe we should not do that, actually. Thank you for the follow, uh, Fear Fire 7. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's change this. Uh, so over here... We're going to go for copper cable. Set blacklist on the one that goes to the trash. Filter here is copper cable. Nervous orbit copper cable. Change the name of this station. Copper cable provider. Nice to see a streamer doing space exploration. No worries. Shop Shadow Plus. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, I know for me I looked forward most to the alternative, ref alternative recipes for things like LDS, blue chips, heat shielding. Blue chips... Hold on a sec. I need to double check this real quick. Provide stack threshold 160. Train limit... Th yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, and we need to do a request for copper cable here. Uh, it stacks to 200, doesn't it? Your space base is advanced. Uh, thank you. Okay. So that's one less thing that we're 
wasting copper plate on up here, and also we get the productivity bonuses this way. And once that fills up, there should be a train schedule to bring copper cable here. That also means more copper plate going to blank data cards. And we're still waiting on our first shipment of uh, electromagnetic field data here. It's at 11k, there should be a train coming to pick it up. 240 times 50. Nope, I'm wrong. It has to get to 12k. We set the, uh... We set the provide threshold artificially high to prevent the loading issue. Also, glad I ended up staring at these. Because I kind of forgot to do this thing. And if I had to do it after the train arrived, it would have been a problem, because we have to keep them all perfectly in sync, because we can't tell uh, exactly how much is in an individual cargo wagon. These rails look good. Thank you, Smeagol. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm very happy with these uh, rail blocks. Um, they're actually perfectly square, so you can rotate them as many times as you like. They're going to be exactly the same. Um, the straight rail is one way, but on the roundabouts, the trains can actually go both directions. Uh, that's why you've got these little crisscross things around each of the intersections. So that the trains can hop on the uh, roundabout going counterclockwise. And that allows us to have train stops that are with with two with bi-directional trains. Um, we can have train stops that are just, this is the whole thing. This is all the space it needs to take up. As long as it comes off of the uh, roundabout, the train can Enter and exit here in any direction it likes. Speaking of trains, this one's empty. Did we get our copper cable here yet? Uh, looks like it. Yeah, I suspect we did get our delivery of copper cable. That's just a feeling I have. Okay. Oh, and I meant to add a icon here so we know what's what. Rough data storage substrates are on the move. I'm beginning to wonder if just one of these... Oh, wow. That's running out quickly. It does have to be empty before it automatically launches another one, but still... I suppose that's another reason to have two of these in the network. Uh, otherwise, there will definitely be some downtime. No, well, almost definitely there'll be some downtime when there's no, effectively no rough data storage substrates available uh, for the rail network to pick up. Now that this is empty, we should see a rocket launching here. Fantastic. Really nice to see all of these machines working at full speed. We still don't have blank data cards up here though. And here is our train finally picking up electromagnetic field data. It's had some trouble doing that in the past, but I think it was just that we weren't setting the provide threshold high enough to make sure the precise loader works. And... 
Once the stack set. Wait, what? Uh, something's wrong. Oh. Well, I'm glad I moused over that to illustrate this. Uh, we just figured it out. The problem with this particular precise loader is not that I set the provide threshold too low earlier. Uh, where is it? Is this it? The problem, actually, is that we forgot to subtract uh, the amount that's in the train from the amount that the train is asking for in the first place so that the stack size gets reduced as this thing approaches being full and then we switch over to just a few more inserters. How are you handling the rocket stuff between the different planets? Um, you don't actually need to use uh, signal transmitters and receivers. If you aim a cargo rocket at... Oh, this has been launched. Let me just check something real quick. Huh? Wait. What? Oh, no, it hasn't launched. I'm silly, actually. I saw this, and I thought there was no uh, space capsule sticking out of it. Okay, so the cargo rocket silos and the uh, cargo landing pads actually have ESP. Um, if you point this at Nalvis Orbit Mall and set it to launch on cargo full, it won't launch unless the Nalvis Orbit Mall uh, cargo landing pad is completely empty. So as long as you set up rockets to be full of just one item, it's actually very easy to set up. Um, you can... You can get a signal from it that says... Uh, this one, cargo rocket, which just means the cargo rocket is ready to launch. Um, you can get signals that tell you how many cargo rocket sections and space capsules and stuff are in there, so that you don't overfill those. Doing it manual? Uh, no, not most of the time. Good to know, so you don't need a lot of circuit stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, I do have a lot of circuit stuff here to automatically load it with whatever I put on these constant combinators. Um, that's not what we're doing in the rail network, which is a bit more straightforward. Um, if you go to the Informatron, uh, it actually tells you quite a lot about the signals that are built into the cargo rocket silos. So, uh, you can wait till a cargo rocket is ready to launch before loading it, which is what we're doing here. We could do something a bit more advanced, but, uh, it doesn't require any combinators if we just don't load it with, um, copper plate until it's ready to launch. If you do want to use uh, combinators, you could start loading this before the thing is ready to launch. The only trouble with doing that... Uh, the only reason you would ever not want to load this yet is because mod limitations... Um, in, uh, you actually have to put the space capsule or the cargo rocket sections into these inventory slots before they get applied to these numbers up here. They just sort of go in and then disappear. And if you've completely run out of space, um, it won't do that. Also, if you do just use the launch on cargo full, and you're not using like a green signal or anything, 
as soon as this inventory slot is taken up, even if it's not full, uh, it will launch the rocket. So, if you're not keeping up with consumption on the other end, there is going to be a little tiny inefficiency there, but I don't think it's enough to worth worrying about. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to get together to have cargo rockets going automatically, especially with the recycling of uh, space capsules and cargo rocket sections. It is a bit of a logistical headache, but once you get it all going in a loop back and forth, where I've actually got... here it is. Uh, wow, that is a lot more than I was expecting. I haven't actually set this up fully automatically just yet, but um, the idea of this cargo rocket full of packed cargo rocket sections and space capsules is just to send it back to Nalvis when we end up with too many up here. I think I set this to... Hmm. Cargo rocket section packed. Oh, that's right. So we're requesting packed cargo rocket sections here, not the regular cargo rocket sections. And I also have some circuitry here to say only if we're really full on space capsules. Uh... Are we going to send space capsules to this cargo rocket? Um, the packed cargo rocket sections... The cargo rocket sections get brought back here. And somewhere I have something that says... Oh, I think it's this combinator right here, actually. If we have more than a long train worth of cargo rocket sections start packing them, basically. Um, and then everything that's in this logistic network is available to the train logistic network. Um, so the packed cargo rocket sections will get brought back here. How much is one packed? It's five cargo rocket sections. Uh, it's just a... It's a very short, um, it's a very quick recipe that doesn't cost anything except for energy, just to turn packed into unpacked and vice versa. How's power? Power is suboptimal, actually. Uh, why don't we grab some flat solar panels? And... I wonder where I should put them. Do we have the spiders requesting flat solar panels? A little bit? Yeah. I think I'll personally request a few more. Oh, we have 3,000 in storage. Fantastic. Actually, make it like 400. And let's go and put them somewhere. I might just drop them over here, actually. Until we figure out somewhere a bit more specific. I, I should have, like, a giant solar farm up here or something. Although the further away I put it, the more of a pain it's going to be to get to. Uh, we've upset our bots a little bit. Oh, that's suboptimal. Uh, there's also not that much scaffolding here just yet. Right. Old bus. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Yeah, power going bad actually scares me a little bit because I worry that it could throw off certain very sensitive circuits. Like this one. The trouble is when I... Um, uh, when I went to the trouble of upgrading power earlier, I was looking at... I was looking at power when we didn't have enough copper for this or something like that. When we weren't doing as many things. Um, should probably create a copy of this. Upgrade planner. Flat solar becomes tier two. And then Run it over that. Easy peasy. We've run out of scaffolding here already. I'll place what I can. Let's go get some more scaffolding. Also, I should probably... Uh, let's put down an accumulator. Accumulator. And a programmable speaker. I don't know if we're requesting those. Let's ask for just one. Although, we're a bit busy making pipes right now. Can we turn off everything else? Should be the only one now. We're still not trying to make programmable speaker, why not? Oh, because we already had it? I wasn't expecting that answer. Alright, so we're going to say if accumulator charge is less than 100%. That'll do. But first, let's get our accumulator charge back. Should make it global and everything as well. Also, I think my sound settings... I've got alerts set to 0%, otherwise I perpetually hear alerts that biters are attacking. But we can at least maybe notice it if it's flashing here. Just kidding, there's always something flashing here. Hmm. I could add a red light as well. Um, gonna need a constant combinator just to give it a color. Red signal. If accumulated charge less than a hundred, uh, use colors. Okay. That might be a better way to go. And back up here. Mini heart attack here, thought they were my alerts. <laughs> My bad. What is the benefit of using accumulators in orbit? Um, mostly 
to some extent I use them out of habit, but also we might actually get some warning if power is dropping. Also, also, uh, it's a bit moot now, we've got way more than enough power for it to matter, but at a certain point at least it might matter with, um, coronal mass ejections. Also, I just don't have a way to fit the, uh, fit this blueprint together without those 2x2 two two tiles in the middle. Does your power scale up with those mass ejections? I think the ma from what I've seen so far, the coronal mass ejections don't get any bigger. 27 gigajoules. Okay, I may stand corrected. It's taken a very long time for that to happen, though. Uh, do we have the scaffolding here? Not all of it. We've got very sad bots catching up with us. They draw 2 point something gigawatts. Close to the limit. Yeah. We need another gigawatt or so. I'll just leave that red. Anything less than full charge uh, would be a bad sign. Also, we're dropping down again somehow. The power to shield a CME correlates with the solar power multiplier of a surface. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes complete sense, actually. That reminds me, it's uh, not too relevant right now, but let's keep it that way. Wait, where are our construction spiders? Oh, did I leave? No? They did build this. Wait, where did I... Um, does anyone remember where we parked the giant robot army? While I have a think about that, let's get the actual giant robot army to do its thing a little bit. Oh, I think I remember now. I think I had them repair something that was destroyed by the artillery. Let's uh, check on that. Yep, there they are. And they're not carrying—they're not carrying regular solar panels anymore, so they can't actually fix it. Which reminds me of why I was looking for them just now, because I want them to continue upgrading all of these solar panels. Have a look at the add-on solar calculator. Yeah, that seems like a good idea, actually. Alright, so we're just about a gigawatt ahead for now. Um, let's get further ahead. As one does. Oh, not there. Is that connected? Yes and no.
Alright, I think we'll wait for the bots to finish fleshing this out before we add some more solar panels there. I could extend this thing up here. That might make more sense, actually. Oh. Oh, the spiders are struggling to find footholds when they cross the flat solar panels. <laughs> Enough to make the UPS drop. Yeah, they don't like standing on the flat solar panels. Uh, it seems we don't have any scaffolding to add here. Let's go back for now. I think we can just click and send them straight here now. Okay, while we're waiting for that, still don't have uh, electromagnetic field data here. We did set it up properly. We've got 7.4k. I think the delivery... Yep, it was sent up here instead. Hmm, that bit's not looking so good. Electromagnetic field data... We've got one, two, three, four inputs it needs to go into. One, two, three, four outputs here. Oh, they are, they're actually all active at the same time, except for this one for some reason. Polarization data. That just ran out. That's got the same problem. Because this belt isn't as long. Yeah, I really should have merged and split with all of these. Maybe it's not too late. We could have... Could we, though? What's the max rate for all of this? Times two. Uh, it's only 12.48 of each of these per second. And that's that's after we double it. So we can actually just have all of this go left and then merge and then split. That's actually really easy. Let's go fix it. Not that we're probably not still bottlenecked on the electromagnetic field data, but I don't like to leave something like this in the state that it's in. Media was shut down. Fantastic. Like data cards are... What the? Oh, wow. Yeah, this is why we have these robo-networks around the um, cargo landing pads. Looks like one of them landed outside of range. Uh, one of the cargo pods crashed outside of range of this uh, robo-network, even. That's not encouraging. But yeah, we've just got a bunch of construction bots in this network, and... Uh, we don't use logistic bots here, but we have filters on all of the storage chests so that stuff that the construction bots pick up gets put in the right place. I really didn't think that the roboports wouldn't be far enough out. Uh, let's see if we can 
I'm going to have to move that substation. If I do that, that's a little bit of a pain. We could... Really? Fine. We could bump all of these out one tile. Why does this one... Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, we have to bump out the substations by one tile each as well. Okay. Uh, then this would have to be a long arm inserter, actually. Which is fine. Already did that one. One, two. One, two. Does that reach now? Just barely. This is still damaged and isn't going to get repaired. Okay. I don't think the diagonal ones are necessarily going to make that much of a difference. No, they're not. Because of the way this square thing works. Te technically, we only need one of these stations that drop off robots and um, repair packs for each block. Uh, for the for the entire group of them if they're connected but i'm not about to make a different blueprint just for that maybe i will in any case seeing how long it takes them to clean this up and they're not prioritizing repairs either i think we will bump up well okay first of all i need to actually get over there. I'll do this first real quick. Um, splitter. This goes here. And we only need to do it like this. Since the whole thing has low throughput requirements. I suppose. That's right. 